<clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Should have done that before hitting the, rec the the live button, probably. Come on. Okay, turn that off. And there we go. Cool. I think that we're mostly ready. I want to get that page there and do this and do that and do this. All right. There we go. Glad to see you folks. Glad to be back. Uh, thanks for coming by. Let's see here. This thumbnail, my new favorite band. It's you, I posted it on uh, Instagram and it, uh, it, it, it did well. People were, <laughs> people liked it. I'll tell you the story behind it in a bit. Um, let's see here. Good morning, Adam. Looks like you and the guys are about to drop the heaviest yet happiest rock album. Well, you know, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Feisty Crabman, how you doing? Good morning from Central Texas. Howdy. Uh, Double Dip. Good afternoon from Kent, England. Howdy. Afternoon from sunny Denmark. Sorry, I wasn't there naked in the airport to greet you as promised. I mean... That probably would have been, you would have got probably arrested or something. I don't know. Maybe not. I'm not sure how things work in Denmark, but, uh, you know, that I, I, I appreciate the sentiment. Let's just say that. Uh, Nick Butler, how you doing? Checking in from Sussex. There's sunshine and priming in my day. It is very sunny today. So the benefit is that hopefully it shouldn't, like I did the uh, Patreon live show yesterday uh, and uh, it was partly sunny. So it would get dark and then light and then get dark and then light. And I was constantly up here adjusting the doohickey the the filter thing um but right today it's just there's not a cloud so hopefully we'll you know won't have to mess around with it too much um let's see here hello from oklahoma bf bulldog how you doing good time of day from surrey just received my fanatic starter set this morning looking forward to trying it out nice i've got one right here as a matter of fact they sent me this quite a while ago but i wasn't supposed to show it off until a certain point and then I kind of forgot about it and then yesterday I was like oh yeah I've got that so yeah this is uh, available in stores now it's 40 or 45 bucks I don't remember exactly but it comes with I don't know 10 comes with matte black matte white leather brown ultramarine blue green skin demonic yellow pure red silver gold brush on gray primer and strong tone and a brush and a miniature so all of that's in there um I would call it a true starter. It's with the new Fanatic paints, which are spectacular. Um, also, if your local store carries the stuff, they probably have their rack set up now. So it has all of the singles. You can buy any one of the 216 new bottles and uh, knock yourself out. So, um, yeah, there you go. Let's see here. Where was I? Um... Uh, hello from Chicago. Painting some Viking warriors to use with Saga. Nice. Good morning from unseasonably cool Tennessee. I think it's supposed to get up in the 50s here today, so that's not terrible. Happy Sunday from De Plain, Illinois. How you doing? Good morning from soggy coastal North Carolina. Uh, did you get all the marks of Den while there? I don't think so, no. I think I, I saw two or three of them, but I didn't put them in my inventory, so that's on me. But it was a good time, definitely. Um, well, that made me jump. Cheers, Adam. Sorry. Uh, a chilly morning in KCMO, working on Fallout Wasteland Ghouls. Nice. We just watched, my wife and I just watched the first two episodes of the new uh, Fallout TV show on Amazon or whatever it's on uh, last night. And um, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. So far, so good. Yeah, I've been enjoying it. Um, let me see here. Traditional muttering can only mean one thing. Indeed, indeed. Clearwater, Florida with hot tea in my Wisconsin mug. Nice. Um, let's see, morning from Quebec, morning from Calgary, greetings from Denmark, how you doing? That pick looks like you guys about to drop the hardest punk rock album of all of the year. I mean, maybe, probably not, I don't, I mean, technically, I have sung in a band, uh, Sam can play, I think technically, we were talking about it, I think we maybe all play instruments, well, I don't play instruments, but I can sing, sort of, I mean, not really, I'm not good at it, but, you know, otherwise I'd probably still be doing it, um, but I don't think we're going to start a band. It seems like a lot of work. Morning from Rhode Island. Painting heavy gear. Nice. Nice haircut. Thank you. I was going to trim my beard. Uh, and then this morning I realized I had forgot to charge up the trimmer. So when I turned it on, it was just like, I can tell right away whether it's going to work or not. 
like if it's kind of at this kind of high pitch, like you turn around, and it's like, Meh, like yeah, okay, but if it's just like, Meh, I'm like, oh, that's gonna get stuck, and then I'm gonna be screwed. So uh, next time, um, we'll, we'll we'll do that. Greetings from Bartlett, Tennessee. How you doing? Love my army painter white. Nice. Uh, hello from Reading, UK. New glasses. These are my close up glasses. So these are the glasses that I normally wear around and do stuff with, and these are when I am uh, working here in on the computer. Uh, they're also blue blockers, I guess, so that helps with like eye strain for long computer usage and things. But these are the ones that I use when I'm sitting close enough so I can read chat and like, you know, I've been working on uh, the, you know, the layout for the new game and things like that. So I always keep those here and then I swap when I and the th thing is, is I'll get up and walk away and then I can't see past about 20 feet. Everything's kind of blurry a little bit. And I'm like, gosh, and I have to go back and put these back, you know, switch them out. But yeah. Um, good afternoon from Sweden. How you doing? Tinley Park, building my Dungeons and Lasers Deus Lair. That's pretty cool. Uh, Southern Illinois, sunny morning from the Mitten. Game day at the FLGS. Nice. Good afternoon from Norfolk. Uh, Panzer Gren Grenadiers, using Chain and Command. Nice. Um, good morning from. Okay, how you doing? Uh, not gonna lie, I like your jacket there, Adam. Are the their tabletop minions patches available? There are tabletop minions patches. They're not yet available. Like I have a bunch of them and they've been, I've sold them at TMX. I've sold them at like Adepticon, but, uh, there's three main things that I'm going to be working on after the third of June. Uh, the majority of my travel for the year will be done. Um, cause I still got two more shows to go to between now and TMX and then of course there's TMX which is not so much travel it's just over there but anyway um what else so I've got that I've got the game design yada yada all that kind of stuff but for the summer my three plans are work on the basement um work on my merch store slash website and also my plan is to do some um uh kind of bigger terrain projects not like crazy scale terrain but like you know some terrain projects that I turn into videos and stuff like that. Those are the three big things for this this summer. I'm trying to not overextend myself and then make myself sad when I'm not able to hit the target. So that's what I'm trying to do. But um, yeah, there will be products available, um, including this shirt now that I come to think of it uh, that I had designed some time ago, uh, but is not also yet not available, but will be. Um, yeah, so it'll hopefully be a whole thing. Um, do, 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 do. And then the jacket is, yeah, we've all got the jackets. Um, uh, mine, I think I, I put a patch on mine. Uh, that's I don't know if anyone else has got any patches or not. I was hoping for your last video to talk about the Adepticon location change, but you explained why in the video. Can you talk about it today? Uh, well, I mean, you know, there's, there's some news for sure. If you haven't heard, uh, Adepticon 2025 uh, is going to be in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So they're moving from Schaumburg, Illinois. They've been in Illinois since the beginning, not Schaumburg necessarily. Previous to Schaumburg, it was Lombard. And I don't know where it was previous to that, if it was anywhere previous to that. But um, if you were at Adepticon this year, you will probably agree with me that it was packed. Like it was, it was over 8,000 people. Um, I've heard 8,200, you know, that kind of thing. So um, that facility just doesn't fit anymore. So there was a lot of talk about how eventually they were going to need to move somewhere. And now it looks like, well, I mean, they came out with it and it's on here on the website. Um, they're moving to the Baird Center in Milwaukee. Now, if you used to go to Gen Con back in the day when it was in Milwaukee, that's where it's going. So back in the day, that thing was... Well, technically that building wasn't called Mecca. Mecca was across the street. Um, and then they built this thing called the Midwest Express Center. So from not the entirety of my Milwaukee Gen Con uh, experience, I started Gen Con in 92 in Milwaukee and went all the way through until it you know, moved to Indianapolis in 2003. And then I started going to Indianapolis. Um, I missed a couple in Indianapolis here and there, two or three, maybe four tops, I think. Anyway. My point is, is that um, through most of the time that it was in Milwaukee that I was attending, it was at this place, this newer building they built called the Midwest Express Center. Midwest Express was an airline, a small regional airline, which is no longer in business. So then it changed names to the Wisconsin Center, and now it's changed names to the Baird Center. So somebody else is now the sponsor. I don't know how that stuff works with naming rights. 
but the building has been refurbished. It's in the process of being refurbished and stuff like that. From what I understand, it'll be done by next year. Um, they're also adding another like 100,000 square feet of convention space, which will bring this building to somewhere around 1.2, 1.3 million square feet of convention space. Um, and there are multiple hotels. It's in downtown Milwaukee. So there are, uh, you know, basically if you didn't make the hotel at Adepticon, if you didn't get into the Renaissance, you had roughly 450 rooms and then and if you didn't then you were staying in some other hotel which at the closest was a maybe 10 minute walk half a mile this new place um there are probably 4,000 rooms within a you know that same distance so you know you've got a lot of uh, possibilities and different places you can stay and I think at least three or four of those are technically attached via skywalk so you don't have to even go outside like if it's snowy or rainy or you know, locusts, I guess. It's probably too, a little too early in the year for locusts, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, raining blood, all those different things. Um, so yeah, uh, Gen Con got up to sixteen or 18,000 in that building way back in the 90s, in the early 2000s, before they had to move. So there's tons of room for Adepticon to grow there, which is going to be great. Uh, I know that currently there is a an anime convention that goes on in that same facility that has 20,000 people generally. So, I mean, yeah, they'll have definitely room. So that'll be very cool. And I'm looking forward to it. I mean, for me, admittedly, it's about an hour less on my drive, but that honestly doesn't matter. Going from, an, you know, two and a half hours to an hour and a half, not that big of a deal. Um, and I know some people, there's obviously because, you know, as, as war gamers, the two things that we hate most are the way things are now and you know change um so uh there have been there's been plenty of gnashing of teeth and things like that in comments but i've also seen far more people who are like this is a good move for the overall convention so but yeah um i think it's gonna be good i think i really do let me see i my my chatter went on further than i thought um, William Edley, how you doing? Uh, Leaf on the Wind, good morning. Building a tank today for Tanks of the Apocalypse. Nice. Fungazi, how you doing? Lovely Washington, D.C. Um, good morning from Cloudy and Chili, Quebec. Good morning from Harling Harlingen, Texas. Wishing I had brought my power tools last night before it rained. Oh, yeah, no. My dad used to yell at my brother and I when we would leave the tools out in the rain. Um, Rebasing Hero Clicks, Mage Knight, Pathfinder, and Starfinder miniatures for skirmish games here in rainy North Carolina. It's not a bad way to go, you know, honestly. It's kind of quick and, and generally simple, usually. Um, let's see. Uh, morning from Townsville. Good morning from Rockton, Illinois. Uh, back home after a bachelor party. Thanks for shortening the rest of my trip. Absolutely. Um... Let's see here. Northeastern Connecticut, trying to make time to paint some Skaven. Nice. Um, da, 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 whoops, they moved. Uh, uh, hi from Amsterdam. I'm finishing my DIY demon ship terrain. How you doing? Uh, morning from Chilly Philly, cold in Pennsylvania. Gotcha. Uh, long time watcher from Australia. You've ever, I have never caught a caught you live. Oh well, there you go. Uh, glad to have you, Patrick. Uh, Got to head to bed. Absolutely. Thoughts on the new location? Yeah, I, like I said, um, really looking forward to it because of the space. I know there's people that are like, yeah, but now it's going to be, a, you know, you can't just like walk upstairs into, you know, your hotel room and then come back downstairs and stuff like that. But that's pretty rare amongst conventions. And to be perfectly frank, it was actually pretty rare amongst Adepticon these days because like the rooms sold out this year in like less than 60 seconds. You know what I mean? So I... Usually I have a room at there. I'm usually pretty good about having my credit card out and everything ready to go. And I didn't even get a room this year, unfortunately. Um, and I was like right there hitting F5 to refresh the page, you know, waiting for it to flip over to noon. And just boom, they were gone. So that just shows that it's a very, very popular convention, which is good. But it is also a situation where, yeah, you know, that's if you want people to be able to attend and and because there are people out there who are going to be like, look, if I have to take an Uber every day or something back and forth to get to the convention, it's maybe I'm not going to do it. But if you're like, look, there's hotels, then you it's maybe a five minute walk, maybe a 10 minute walk, and then you're there or maybe even closer. Um, yeah, I think that that's going to be good. Um, trying to find a, a looking forward to trying out the new paint line as soon as I can get back to painting anything besides fencing. Gotcha. VJ Morph, how you doing? 
morning outside of New Orleans. I uh, wanted to say thank you. I remember a while back you com commented on a Reddit post where I was going through a rough time and took some of your advice and now I'm painting while watching. Well, good to hear, Obsidian. Absolutely. I'm glad that, that I'm glad that those things help. Absolutely. Uh, hope your trip was good. Trip was good. Uh, it was the trip there was let me go back to that. Um, the trip there was uh, was a little difficult. Um, I know that Sam got a big delay. So initially, the five of us, because there's the four of us in the factory team, and then of course there's Adam uh, from Army Painter, but he lives in the States, so he was coming over too. Um, the five of us were all going to hit Copenhagen between like 8 in the morning and 2 p.m. Mine was going to be the latest, about 2 p.m., and I think either Phil or Adam were going to get there at 8. And then we were all going to take a train from Copenhagen. Copenhagen to Skanderborg, Skanderbo. It's 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 spelled Skanderbor Skanderborg, but they pronounce it like Skanderbo, like the G's not there or something. I don't know. Anyway, or the R. Anyway, um, but that's where Army Painter is based out of. So the problem was is that Sam's one of Sam's flights got delayed, so he didn't get in until seven p.m. So Adam and Phil were there from like eight nine in the morning. You know, it was a whole thing, and then we all took a train later, um, and so. Basically, we were kind of doing the math on the train, and by the time that we got done and everybody got to their hotel rooms, we had all been up about 36 hours each. So that's a little bit problematic, but, you know, um, it's, you know, we got across the, the, the Atlantic Ocean in a day, which is, you know, back in the old days, that would have been a much longer trip, obviously. But it would have been nice to have been less delayed, but it's just what it is what it is. So, um... And then on Monday, um, we took a tour of the factory in the morning, which was cool. Like, it was way bigger than I thought it was. There's a scene, and I don't know if I caught it as, as well as it, like, looked in person, but there's, like, this scene where you're, like, looking down this aisle, one of the aisles of the of the warehouse, and it kind of goes off into the distance, like in, uh, like, uh, um, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark at the end, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it just goes way off in the distance. And then I realize as I look closer, there's a doorway that goes into another warehouse that's like the same distance. It just keeps going. And I was like, oh, geez. So, um, yeah, no, it's way bigger than I thought. There's about 80 employees. Um, I think they said something like they can produce about 400,000 bottles of paint per week if they want to, if, if they're running on all cylinders. Um, shot a bunch of cool footage of the bottling machines doing their thing and shot a bunch of all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, it was really interesting to see the facility and to see, like, the amount of people there and doing all the stuff and everything like that. It was neat. Um, and then um, we also, we just did a bunch of other things. We created a bunch of content. So we filmed a bunch of interviews and things like that that Army Paint will be using. Um, Phil and Bo, who's the founder of the company, they did a, uh, not a full battle report, but they played a game that got filmed Um some of the rest I did a panel where I was like the MC on the panel and I was talking to Sam and Thomas and Stefan who are all you know high-end painters Thomas and Stefan work for our army painter Sam is Sam you folks know him um talking about a bunch of different things and it just it was a lot of different uh, uh Eric made a bunch of terrain so yeah it was just a lot of um doing that kind of stuff it was also meetings um you know some product testing stuff, some kind of brainstorming stuff, things like that. You, we you can't really talk about it at this point, but um, it was a good time. Uh, I think productive stuff. Plus, we went to cool, a cool Viking museum, which is where that picture's from. Um, uh, but yeah, it was uh, it was really a good time. It was um, it was good. My trip back was easier, which the guys there in um, Denmark are always like, yeah, the trip. Well, some people are like the trip from Denmark to America is easier in general because the, you're going back in time so it doesn't mess with um, jet lag as much. But then some of the guys were just like saying the trip home from anywhere is always easier than the trip getting to where you're going. So I don't know if there's any truth to that or not necessarily. I suppose it's maybe one of those things that's dependent upon, you know, <laughs> what your opinions are. But yeah, um, but the trip back was easier for sure. Uh, let's see here. Have spent the last couple of weeks painting three single piece castings, one of which is the first orc I painted in 20 years. Kind of forget how I used to do them. Nice. Uh, sunny, chilly Milwaukee from a guy that gets to sleep in his bed for Depticon. I mean, there's some benefit to that for sure. Um, morning from Maine, new studio. Just kidding. Uh, good morning from Alexandria. How you doing? 
Angela and I have decided to give up on Fallout after three episodes. Tried Shotgun tonight. Or Shogun, not Shotgun. Uh, that's cool. Checking in while on my way home from Wilmington, uh, NC, to Illinois. Unable to stay. I'll watch in full later. Absolutely. Let's see here. Good morning from Juneau, Alaska. Just got my blackout order after hearing you mention it. It looks awesome. Yeah, I'm um, looking forward to starting to paint that stuff. This, unfortunately, well, technically I might be able to do some of it in May. I'm not going to be able to do any of it until at least the beginning of May because I'm going to be pretty much working. I'm pretty much working nonstop now on game layout mode. So that's, they're, they're, other than me working on, you know, Twitch, streaming on Twitch, I'm not, unfortunately, got any time for a hobby between now and like May 1st or so. So, um, and then a couple days after that, then I'm heading to Canada for a trade show for a distributor called Lion Rampant. I'll be in Niagara on the Lake, I believe is the name of the city. It's literally right across the border from Buffalo. So I'll be there for like two or three days. Um, let's see here. Um, Lublin. Poland, Cologne, Germany. Uh, how you doing? Currently contemplating which 3D printer to buy. Oh, gotcha. Need a new beard trimmer, and my new one has a battery that is almost always ready to go, even weeks later. I yeah, I gotta get a new one too. This one's been this one's old. Um, Nuremberg, Germany. Why are there the why are the X-ray vision glasses? I don't think they're X-ray vision. That'd be cool if they were, though. Uh, morning from Chicago. Never get stuck and screwed, I suppose. Sure. Um, I was just in Chicago because that's where my um, flight was out of. Basically flew on the way there. <laughs> I, fl I drove three hours to Chicago, flew from there to Minneapolis, Minneapolis to Amsterdam, and then Amsterdam to Copenhagen. On the way back, it was Copenhagen to JFK, JFK to uh, O'Hare. That was that was way easier as well. Uh, greetings from the pocket dimension. Sunny, a little chilly. Perfect spring day. Nice. Working on five leagues. Nice. Um, let's see here. Hey, from Tennessee. Quite pleased. Nice. Painting and priming some, or printing and priming some Bastaria minis. Nice. Good morning from Columbus, Ohio. Worked on Age of Sigmar Dominion. Picked it up because it was so cheap. Can't believe I slept on AOS models for so long. They are great sculpts. You're right. I, I think so. I really do. Hello from sunny Ireland. 200 days of rain over. Wow, nice. Good afternoon from the home of GW, planning out some 15 millimeter Dark Ages forces for Lion Rampant. Nice. Raining in BC yet. Friday was 20 degrees Celsius. Dogs got a lot of long runs, I suppose, yeah. Uh, I think you should key the video style from this Friday as a switch up when needed. Yeah, I mean, the, it it was easier, honestly, because uh, it was, um, I don't know, there's... I. I could easily see myself doing something like that in the basement once things get a little bit more set up. I was kicking around the idea last night of, so when I do move into the basement, um, I've got these two walls that kind of come to a corner. Well, I mean, technically the building is, you know, it's rectangular, so there's a bunch of corners, but the, where I'm planning on having my backdrop is gonna, instead of it just being a flat wall, it's gonna be two walls behind me, like going to a corner back there, but I will be a bit away from it. So you'll be able to see more of that space too. And they're just white cinder block walls because, I don't know, the place is like 104, 105 years old. Um, house I grew up in, the basement walls weren't cinder block. They were like, I don't know what they were, but they weren't cinder block. They were kind of bumpy and textured and, and weird, uh, but it was also a slightly older house. Anyway, my point is, is I've been thinking, because I do have a cheap, cheap, cheap digital projector. Uh, I've been thinking about taking like the logo, the Tabletop Minions logo over there uh and i've been thinking about me projecting that up on the wall and then making a mural you know what i mean so it's like right now in the back of my normal videos i've got a big giant sticker but in this way i could make it even bigger because that sticker is as big as that company can produce it like it's i think it's a max width situation um they can it's, it's on a roller so they can go longer but they can't go any wider so being a hexagon you know here so uh my point is is that maybe i'll do that and I've been kicking around that idea. But maybe while that's going on, I could do some videos again with the camera following and all that kind of stuff. Though some people did say that thought they thought it made them nauseous, which that's a bummer. Um, let's see here. Uh, Levittown, Pennsylvania, Macon, Georgia. How do you store your paints? Um, 
I put them in, I have a lot of uh, like uh, these little acrylic uh, shelving things that you get if you own a um, nail salon. So I, you buy them on Amazon and so then the bottles just sit like this normal so that, you know, they're just on their, their butts and with a cap sticking up in the air. That's the way I do it. I do prefer to store my brushes flat or maybe pointing down. When a brush is wet, like you've wiped it out and all that kind of stuff, and you've dried it off, and then you stick it into, let's say, a mug or a cup or whatever with the bristles up. I don't have any science behind this, but I swear I have heard that any last particulates that are still in the brush, they have a tendency to start to, with gravity, go down, and they get down into the ferrule and the base of the brush and stuff like that, which is why you want to store them at least flat so then they don't, you know, go this way back into the brush. Or if you, in a perfect world, you store them somehow pointing down, but you don't put them on the bristles, obviously that would suck. You have some sort of a clip thing. I actually bought a couple of products on Amazon, which I'll show up next week that I might make some videos about, uh, which may help with that. But uh, yeah, that was something I was thinking about actually on the trip back. Um, let's see here. Hope your basement reno is going well. And like I said, it's not going to start until June, but uh, June 3rd, third is a day that I'm looking forward to in which I will lay around and probably um, eat snacks and watch some movies and probably not do anything that day. And then June 4th was, will be me starting to work on those big three projects like I was talking about. Um, but yeah. Listening while at work, how you doing? Overextending and then hating oneself for not making improved deadlines is my ADHD jam. I'm trying to be better about it. So that's what I'm, yeah, that's why I'm saying three things. Uh, I appreciate your videos and the time to dedicate to helping others in the hobby. We need more people just like you. I appreciate that, Duke. That's very nice of you to say. Listening from the coast of Maine. Enjoy your channel. Thank you. I appreciate that. What is the big warmer 40K hubbub about? I keep hearing this woke hammer. Um, something about there's a lady custodes and people got angry about it because... They evidently don't have anything else to get angry about in their life. I don't know. There's a lot of other things out there to get angry about that actually matter. I mean, if you don't like the lady custodians, then don't buy it. I, I don't. I don't get it. But yeah. Um. Anyone play Kings of War Ambush? Is that anything like Kings of War the Vanguard, or is that a different thing? I don't get how the game is miniature agnostic, but they have a mini line for some factions. Not at all. That's weird. Growing room, growing room will be good for the con. Absolutely, Schaumburg Marriott and Crown Plaza before Lombard. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I don't think I ever went to those. I started in two thousand nine or ten. I think it was two thousand ten was my first year. So yeah, we're from Pittsburgh. Crazy weather knocked back my sinuses. Um, I think I'm way behind in the chat. My goodness. Never find out about these shows until afterwards. Uh, far too distant to attend. I'm afraid that Adepticon moving farther north is going to make it even more difficult for me to go. There are no direct flights, and I'm not sure I could make the drive in a day. I mean, it is a an, an extra hour. That's I mean, that literally, that's to drive from Milwaukee to uh, or from Chicago to Milwaukee is an hour. But you know, it might not be something to do in a day. Uh, Saskatchewan, how you doing? I was at Adepticon this year, and the best deal in a hotel I could get was 2.3 miles per hour. It was only like a five-minute drive. Yeah, if you can find a place to park, that was the biggest issue. Like, that's the thing, is that if you want to drive, but then when you get to, to the place, it was very difficult to find a place to park. You There were more and more places you started. There were more places this year to park because there was a place across the street. So that was good, but it was getting more and more difficult. Um Did I? I think I just, yep, it all scrolled. Um, e there we go. Okay. Uh, you need to have it in Texas. That sounds warm. Well, March, probably not that warm, but um, let's see here. Um, it was at Adepticon this year. Oh, I read that one. Okay. Made it. How are you doing, Red Jack? Dining options will rock if we get a sense of the convention layout. Hotel selection will be easier. True, true. I was really hoping that next year would have been my first Adepticon, but I'm not sure if I could get there. Gotcha. Um, Midwest Gaming Classic two weeks ago just happened. It had supposedly 30,000 people. Let's just say that's fluff, but it's likely over 25. It was a great time. One of these days I'm going to Midwest Gaming Classic, but it, 
like literally I was outside the country, so it didn't happen. But uh, one of these days I want to go to it. Um, is BrisCon any good? I don't know what that is. Is that, is that, I might not been to that. Morning from the Netherlands, Kit Bashing, a Legion Overseer. Nice. Hello from Glasgow. Haley, how you doing? Uh, good morning from Orlando. Uh, let's see here. Good morning from Steamwood, Illinois. I snooped around Adepticon for the first time this year. Looking forward to the convention in Milwaukee, my grandparents' hometown. Nice. Putting together Commander Farsight. Must be a couple hundred pieces here. Yeah, they, they need to dial that back, seriously. Um, good morning from New Hampshire. Yes. Uh, trying to build a combat patrol for the first time later. Nice. Or first game later. Gotcha. Hello from Newfoundland. Painting the Knight Lancer shield that I filled with skulls. Oh, that's a cool concept. Yeah, I can see that. Molly, how you doing? Terrence, Texas has ReaperCon. Yes, that's true. They do have ReaperCon. Usually around the same time, too, I think, isn't it? Or no, that's not true. When is ReaperCon? ReaperCon is around the same time as Nova? Maybe that's right. I've certainly never gone to a convention and stayed at the venue. It's, yeah, it's pretty rare. Like Gen Con obviously doesn't do that. Nova, well, technically Nova, yeah, you can stay in the hotel that Nova is in. That's always been kind of the case. So that's kind of true. And obviously LVO, same type of thing. But they're considerably smaller. That's the trick. Is that When you're talking about that scale, like Nova and LVO are maybe 3,000, 4,000 people max, I think. And, you know, one of them's in Vegas, which, you know. Um, so that's they've got tons of huge, massive uh, convention space anyway. So <clears throat> hello from Paris. How you doing? Having been to way too many Dragon Cons, it's sometimes nice to get away from the con to your room and decompress. Sure, absolutely, I get that. Skywalks to hotels to the Barrett are pretty much the same distance as the Renaissance elevators to the hall. Wow, okay. Um, let's see here. But heading north from where I am, it's a different direction, so about equidistant without cutting west. If you're taking a day to travel, then what's another two hours? I don't know. Let's see here. wonder if the move will end the free-to-look-around-and-shop bonus. I don't know, honestly. Um, I mean, I don't think so. Like, I feel like the reason that Gen Con does that specifically, because honestly, I don't know any other convention besides Gen Con that does that, of the ones that I go to, admittedly. Like, if you went to Las Vegas Open, well, maybe Las Vegas Open, they check your ID, you're not your ID, but you look for your badge when you're trying to get in there. It might be LVO. But Nova, I think if you just walked in and decided to buy stuff from the vendor hall and make the vendors happy... I don't think they're going to stop you. I don't think you need your badge for that. I don't remember that at Nova. Um, and it's smart, I think, of Adepticon, too, for people who are, like, local. Especially, I would think, with the move to Milwaukee, you're going to have people who weren't necessarily interested in driving even an hour to just look around at Adepticon. But now, you know, there's a lot of gaming stores in Milwaukee. Obviously, there's a lot of gamers all over the Midwest. But it might just be a different group of folks who are like, well, heck, you know. I'll drive over there and check it out and buy some cool stuff from vendors, which makes vendors happy, which, you know, uh, makes Adepticon happy, you know? So, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, to be perfectly frank, I have no idea. But I, I get the feeling that it's um, it would be a smart thing to keep, but we'll see how that goes. We'll be having you as a background while I clean and set up my workroom for my new K1 Max. I don't know what a K1 Max is. Is that a 3D printer or something? Got to walk the dog. Let's start at 11. Okay uh scanner bore is that how I, maybe that's what they're saying because it's just like a silent g then i mean, i suppose uh i'm just to see gaming return in milwaukee though i know not everyone was pleased with this i doubt everyone will be pleased with no matter where it moved exactly yeah there's no place to move it to where people somebody wouldn't be like hey you know but that's uh what's the area like around the convention center in milwaukee the only thing i know the center is a friend there went last year for an event and his car was stolen in a parking garage well that's a bummer how does a car get stolen in a parking garage You'd think that they would have, <clears throat> like, stuff for that. You know what I mean? Security and whatnot. Um, let's see here. William Edley says that will remain the same. Now, William Edley is uh, also known as Hank. So Hank and Matthias are the two main guys that run Adepticon. So uh, just FYI, um, when this when this person, William Edley, says something about Adepticon, it's coming from one of the people who uh, organizes it. So uh, right there, that will remain the same, meaning uh, you won't need to buy a badge to you know walk around and look at stuff and go into the vendor hall and things like that. I think that's a smart move, and there you go. 
so yeah so tom when you say that would be nice that 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 is the <laughs> that's an, a, an official um kind of thing right there is what i'm saying so big rabbit just ran across the driveway <laughs> like so big that it like caught my peripheral I'm like good lord anyway um how is denmark is it as friendly and as amazing as i think it must be it's spectacular i wish i could move there honestly um one of the I, I noticed this like later on in the trip and um i never saw a pickup truck that's not true i saw one i saw one little pickup truck uh like a toyota little one you know um Everybody seems to drive hatchbacks for the most part, which I'm a hatchback guy myself, so that's awesome. Um, I never heard a loud truck, car, motorcycle drive by and rattle everyone's bones, and that was awesome to never, you know. Um, so all those things I think are, are, are great personally on a personal level. Um, but yeah, the people are all very, very nice for the most part, all very kind of tall and slender, um, but very nice. Everyone was real helpful. Like on the way back, I was on the train. It was me and Eric and we were like confused as to where, and people were just like, oh, you want to do this and do that. And it was very nice. They were very nice and helpful. Um, it's very much like Wisconsin, frankly, as far as like landscape and such, like it's kind of roughly the same latitude. So Sam and I, both Wisconsin boys, like on the train on the way there, we were just like, this looks like rural Wisconsin as we were going through it, you know, the buildings obviously are older and things like that. But yeah, it was, it was really nice. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I once crossed the Atlantic four times in six days with work. Blah, that sounds terrible. I would think that you would eventually not know what day it was at all. I'm just figuring, finally started figuring out what the day and time is again. I imagine the Matrix scene when he asks the op for guns, guns, lots of guns, except it's uncle and it's paints. Well, yeah. Well, in Denmark, did you visit the World War II wall bunkers? No. The only museum that we visited was the it was a Viking museum, which was super cool. Um, yeah. Bo took us to the Viking museum, which also had a cool um, Egyptian thing going on, too. Like a, a separate, separate. There were like, there's the main Viking museum-y thing, and then there's two smaller, uh, like, things going on. Um displays i don't know whatever but uh one was about uh warriors and soldiers and stuff like that from different time periods uh and the other one was about like i said egyptian stuff and they were all very very cool denmark is a blast indeed and we didn't i didn't really go to copenhagen i was in the airport which is very lovely but we didn't really like walk around copenhagen well sam and phil stayed longer and they went to Copenhagen and did Copenhagen stuff but I was trying to get back as soon as possible to continue working on the game layout and um so I didn't really get to do that but on Wednesday after the Viking thing we went to um Aarhus which is like the second largest city in uh, De Denmark and it's really nice it's a lot closer to uh, uh Skanderborg as well so it's like you know short driving distance to get back and forth between there so that's really kind of nice um but yeah it's a really really nice little town uh well not little but you know i mean it's it's a, it's a nice town and it's you know because it's european there's like lots of shops and lots of walking area and stuff like that and everything which is is very nice um at one point we were walking from the place that we had eaten which was this really cool food market and we were like looking for a bar to go to and we walked past this bar and there was a guy outside having a cigarette i think and he's like, Sam? And then he's like, Uncle Adam? And then he just like, he like recognized all of us and whatever. And he was just there, you know, watching a soccer game at the bar. And um, so we, we talked to him for a little while. And then we did find a bar finally that wasn't full because uh, there was a big game going on, I guess. And we were there and uh, we were having a good time and uh, drinking some pints. And then Adam from Army Painter went up to pay. And then he came back and he's like, hey, uh, our bartender knows all you guys because he's in the hobby but he didn't want to come over and like you know intrude or whatever but he mentioned it to me and everything and so 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 then we went over to the bar like we were sitting at this other table and stuff and we came over and like you know after we paid and talked and all that kind of stuff and there was some selfies and things and so that was very nice as, as well so it was a lot of fun um i have a very strong memory of being in a tiny car thomas the lead painter there he has a very small little hatchback it's like a toyota versa and he's driving 
and then Bo's in the front seat, and then I'm in the back seat, and Adam from Army Painter is also in the back seat, and we're driving through these kind of curvy, you know, European roads in the dark, and um, listening to uh, 9 to 5 by Dolly Parton, like, just cranked, and uh, it was... Uh... <laughs> It was it was nuts. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Anyway, um, let's see here. Painting some resin STL prints and setting up a uh, Frostgrave adventure. Nice. FLGS has outgrown its current location. Is closing this week to move to a space three times the space they usually. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, any photos of the factory allowed would be nice to get a feel for manufacturing. I've got some video, so yeah, there'll be. I don't know if it'll go in this week's video or if in next week's video, but I'm kind of hoping on maybe this week's video. We'll see how things go. But yeah, I am um, definitely. Yeah, I, that was that was part of the reason to go there and stuff. Like, there's certain stuff we can't show, so I have to. I'm gonna bounce it off of um, Adam before it goes live, just because there might be something in the background that's like, because they do a lot of partnerships with. Um, paint companies and or not paint companies sorry with uh, they do they're the paint company that works with game companies so there might be something that's you know there's boxes of something back there that haven't been announced yet or eh, it's always weird legal crap so just you know to make sure that that's the case that's that's what's going to happen uh, admittedly the area around the convention center has some stuff but not tons the east side of milwaukee third and fifth there's where lots of fun and tons to do those locations are close maybe yeah we used to go to the third ward all the time to uh what was the name of that restaurant? We went to Gen Con. We would go there every year. Africa Hut. Very sad it's not there anymore. But man, Africa Hut was awesome. We used to go there. Uh, we used to walk over to Third Ward all the time. My trip home from the 2019 Narrow Gauge Convention certainly wasn't easier than the trip there. Hmm. Pain management uh, means uh, extra days for hotel travel. Gotcha. Good evening from the Philippines. How you doing? Just got done with bacon. 2024, a local gaming convention. Nice. Ran painting workshops on both days and a painting competition earlier today. Well, that's very cool. Nice. Hello from Mexico. Thanks for being great motivation for my hobby. Well, I appreciate that they're one. Shogun is fantastic. Highly recommend. I've been hearing that from friends. Um, let's see here. Seems more product lines and much more. Going to finally see some indie game stuff. That's cool. We went to a humongous shop. Best shop I've ever been in. Easily. In Arhus. And it's called Ferraros. It's like F A R A O S. Um, and then the second part of the name is it looks like cigar with an extra E R on the end. I don't know exactly what that means, but it's um, kind of a small chain in Denmark, I believe, of game shops. We actually walked by another one later on that was, I think, just RPGs. But this one, you walked down the stairs into it. If you went left, it was like cosplay stuff. It was like a small cosplay area with like foam swords and shields and outfits and jazz like that. And if you went left or right, then it was uh, dice, checkout, uh, board games, and then the entire rest of the back area was all miniature stuff. And they didn't have like a super huge selection of miniatures. Like I didn't see any bolt action. I didn't see any infinity. I didn't see any Malifaux. I don't remember if I saw Battletech or not. But they had like everything you could imagine for Warhammer, of course. And there was some other stuff. There was War Games Atlantic. There was other things like that. But as far as hobby stuff, paints, brushes, everything else that's not an actual game piece or a rule set, there wasn't a thing that I couldn't imagine that I did that they didn't have on the shelf. I mean, they were selling plinths. They're selling like they were selling stuff from obviously Army Painter. Like that's kind of front and center because they're you know hometown hero type thing. Um, but then they also had obviously GW and Vallejo, and I'm pretty sure they had Monument, but I don't remember. They did have Turbo Dork. They also had like AK stuff, Green Stuff World, like every company you could think of, you know, brushed it like they were selling Series 7, you know, Windsor and Newtons, like everything. They just, there was a time where I was like, I wonder if they have this. I was just like trying to stump the store and I would be looking around and be like, nope, there it is. It was crazy. It was a very, very fancy store. It was very nice. Didn't have any space for gaming that I saw. So that's a thing, too, which is interesting, kind of after talking about the video two weeks ago, you know. Um, Let's see. Hello from Scotland. Let's see. I'm in northern Germany. Um, So Denmark is real close. Absolutely, yeah. Niagara in the Lake. Yeah, I've never been. I've been to Welland. So I might have driven past it. Because I came from uh, Buffalo and then went down to Welland. Uh, that's, that was back in 2019 when I went to the grand opening or whatever for the um mini wargaming battle bunker um let's see here thoughts on the death of resin 
like 3D printer resin or do you mean like resin printing? I haven't heard anything about that. Or not resin printing, like poured resin. Um, like GW's not probably doing resin much anymore, maybe. And that's probably for the best because they're sort of crap at it. But like companies like um, Anvil Industry, like I will stand by their resin molds, you know, their poured resin stuff any day of the week. I've never gotten anything bad from them. But yeah, I don't know. Didn't even realize Army Painter was based in my home country. Wow. Yeah. Yep. They're right over there in uh, Scanabo. Niagara on the Lake is going to make you not to leave. Oh, well, that's cool. I'm looking forward. You know, I've never been like a, a landscape photographer type person. I'm more of a street photographer type person, but I might take some cool pictures from there. Good morning from Uberland. How you doing? Good morning from Vancouver Island, working on Dragon's Lair for Frostgrave. Cool. We pushed once from Little Rock to Twin Cities for a funeral in one day, and the wife was chairbound for three days afterwards. So well, that's no good. Yeah, I don't like driving long distances. I, The longest distance I've ever driven, excuse me, uh, personally, is about six and a half hours or so from, like, here to Gen Con. That's literally the longest I've ever driven. Um, my wife has driven far longer, and she likes to drive. So if we are going to go someplace further than that at some point, she will probably drive, and I will ride, which is fine. Coming to TMX, will Rex the cat be there? No. <laughs> no, he will not. Uh, good morning, Little Lake. Going gaming today around 11.30. Nice. Niagara in the Lake had a game store or a hobby shop. There would be a reason for me to go there. Otherwise, been there and done that. Gotcha. You can also just green screen a wall and have whatever you want. I mean, there's that too, I suppose. I don't know. Like, green screen's kind of hard. Like, to do it well, you have to shoot in 10-bit and you have to light it right. And then you can be in a situation where it looks really good. But otherwise, sometimes you can, especially around hair, like all of this up here, it gets weirdly fuzzy. It's it's hard to do good green screen. But start laying wire for my first railway layout. Gotcha. Old projectors from high school work great to trace on walls. Sure. I don't have like one of those, um, whatever those top down things are. I just said, like I said, I bought this cheap digital projector years ago. It was like 150 bucks. And it's not very high res. I don't even know if it's necessarily HD, but it's good enough for like tracing things on a wall and, and just messing around with other stuff too. I've used it for other things too. As an optical dispenser, I may compliment you on your glass. May I compliment you on your glasses? Well, I appreciate that. How about a neon light? They aren't an original idea, but they look pretty. I've thought about it a little bit, you know. That's maybe something too. I don't know. I do have a very nice acrylic light thing. Um, when I hit 100,000, uh, my good friends... Um, who I, I used to work for at Milk Can, they uh, got a copy of my logo. They like asked me for a copy of my logo for like some other weird reason. And then I just didn't even think about it. Like they were basically trying to surprise me. And they're like, hey, can we get a copy of the Tabletop Means logo? Cause we're gonna use it for uh, something. And I was like, sure. And I gave it to them and they sent it off to this company and then they like laser engrave it on a piece of, um, like I said, clear acrylic. And then it sits on a base and then there's LED lights inside the base that are like red and they shine up into the thing. So I have that. It's, um, there's not a good place for me to put it in my current setup, like behind, cause there's like not really like an end table or anything back there. It's not something that hangs on a wall. It's something that sits on a table. But my plan is to put that in the background of the, the new set and, and stuff like that. So there's that too. Um, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, storing sideways, but there's more for shape. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could fit more into a spot, maybe, or you see the see it, you can see them a little bit easier when you're trying to pick colors. Maybe I could see that too. Uh, greetings from Denmark. Did you visit Rockskilled Sales Department or only the factory? We were predominantly just in the f factory. I mean, like that's the we were we were in the the building that's attached to the factory. Like we were in like the whole you know all over the place. We were in. Um, you know, there's the, the main like reception area and then there's the break room and then there's the conference room and then there's a bunch of offices and all that kind of stuff. And there's another building that's where like mostly all the graphics and like marketing folks are. And there's a, we went in, we were down in the basement, which is where like the video stuff is and all that jazz. And then the factory itself, there's a little bit of a walk to get to, but it's, it's a whole bunch of buildings all put together and stuff like that. Um, whoops, everything moved again. Um, let me see here. Texas in March. Uh, more from Uperland, Vancouver Island. Uh, yep, yep. Okay, there we go. Got neon light. Gotcha. All right. Um, 
watched your being done video and loved it. The advice you gave and it really made me think it can be applied to so much more than minis. <sighs> yeah, no, I mean, it can. I mean, and that was sort of the idea of the video was to kind of take, look, I, this, this thing that I decided about the video is also a thing that can be useful in your hobby. And that was by design. There were people out there who were like, wow, it seems like, like you were talking about this and you did this video about that, but it was also about this. And I was like, yes, that was, that was the plan. Uh, you know, sometimes stuff like that happens by accident, but in this situation, it was technically my, my intention. Now I kind of came about, about it by accident because I was focusing on how can I make a video as quickly as possible because I have to leave for Chicago in about 14 hours, you know, and, uh, and still find time to sleep in between now and then. Uh, and then I was like, well, I could do that. That wouldn't be too bad. But then what do I make the video about? And then all of a sudden it just sort of popped into my head. Well, it could be about, you know, not concerning yourself about being perfect, but instead just being done. And that's so it all came together. Um, let's see here. I was wanting to do model railroad, not enough, uh, space, money or time. Yeah. There's a lot of space. Definitely. And you don't really take it apart a lot, right? Like I had a friend growing up in school when I was in like grade school and his dad was in the model railroad stuff and it was always there like it's not like a thing like where you're just like well i'll just take all this terrain and put it on a shelf and i'll roll up this mat and now i've got space for other activities it's, it was just dedicated pretty much um good evening from south africa painting my first land raider today it's a model i've wanted for 20 years so having some real fun nice Uh, technically, Kings of War isn't mini agnostic. They just don't really enforce it at all. I mean, technically, any game is middle uh, model agnostic as long as you you know believe in yourself. Um, yeah, I mean that's just you know what I mean. Like it's not. I you can use whatever you want. And like, again, if you're going to a tournament and they're like, well, that's not technically one of our models, and you're like, okay, cool. But um, yeah, really, you can always use whatever kind of models you want. I think Kings of War Ambush is the skirmish version that used to be Vanguard. Oh, okay. Thinking of getting some 3D prints and GW mini, uh, minis, but want to support their line too. Gotcha. Blakes, how you doing? Um, Birmingham, Alabama, signing off. So, glad you had a great trip. Yeah, it was really good. Good news now that you don't have to drive to Chicago for Adepticon. You can probably sleep in your own house. Well, it's still an hour and a half. So I don't know that I want to drive an hour and a half. Because the thing is, is that... With Adepticon in the past, it's always like you don't get a lot of sleep because you're up talking to people until like real early in the morning and then you get up. Or maybe you get to sleep in a little bit sometimes, but it depends on what's going on. So if I also had to drive basically three hours, hour and a half there, hour and a half back, it's not as, it, yeah. If I lived like in Milwaukee, different story for sure. But I am kind of still a good deal up north, as they like to say. Um. Okay, from the UK, sunny afternoon painting, absolutely. The, the upside, though, is that if I forget something like I did two years ago when I left my entire whole backpack in, in here at, at home and then went down there, uh, if my, if I, it would be easier to convince, even easier to convince my wife to bring it to me. Uh, she did drive, you know, she likes to drive, like I mentioned earlier. So for her, driving two and a half hours, dropping it off, hanging out for 10 minutes, then driving back wasn't the end of the world. Although it was very, 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 very nice of her. But technically, my medicine was in that backpack. So um, yeah, again, that it wasn't just like, oh, geez, my laptop is in there. Because she would have been like, well, that sucks to suck. But my drugs were in there. So uh, for, you know, my all my stuff. Um, so that was very nice. Texas in March, there's always a small chance for snow. I mean, there's always a small chance for snow, no matter where you are. Ambush is not Vanguard. Ambush is basically like Combat Patrol. Interesting. Oh, so it's not like a skirmish game. It's just small, small army types like Combat Patrol. Okay, I get you. Um, Let's see here. I've been getting into Pop Z and Rogue Warriors mini skirmish games from Tabletop Skirmish Games. Lee Fox Smith. He's got a great YouTube channel to support the games and he and his son make. I've not heard of those. Interesting. Um, let's see here. Do we need, uh, let's see here. Warhammer, uh, Warhammer is inclusive. They have Sisters of Battle. Sure. Um, and there's ladies in, um, uh, the Imperial Guard. Um, there's ladies in, um, Stormcast. Um, Eldar, like all kinds of stuff like that. Tau. 
Let's see. Hope it was a blast. It was it was great. It was really good. I really had a good time. Um, hello from Lupburg, Germany. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Good afternoon from sunny Spain. Just got a load of Frostgrave minis for my birthday and excited to get building. Nice. Just started paying one page rules. Uh, my first army game and your videos have really helped me take it slow and organized. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think, an important thing is that, like I said, for years now, um, start small, grow slowly. That's that's like my motto for life. Hello from Northern Virginia. I highly recommend Historicon Convention held in Lancaster this July. There's a smallish, there's a pretty small local, like, historical convention that happens in, like, January, which is called TundraCon. Um, it used to be in Appleton, and now it's here in my town, uh, this year, I think. I unfortunately did, did not get a chance to go. I was doing something else. I forget what. I didn't get to go, but I'd like to go and check it out. I, I went once when it was Appleton pre-pandemic. I remember going up there one year and stuff like that. And it wasn't all completely historical. There was some other stuff going on, but it's mostly historical. Warm blood from Florida. What's it like in Milwaukee in March? Uh, not warm. Roughly about the same as it is in Chicago in March, or well, you know, um, Schaumburg. Um, so, like, it snowed one day uh, while we were there uh, this year. Um, otherwise, it was just 30s, you know. Um, it's kind of windy here and there. But it's not too bad. Met the Bits guy at his store in Toledo, Ohio. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Adapticon should be five minutes from my house, in my opinion. Well, it'd be nice, you know. Uh, I need to make it to Essence Spiel someday. I keep hearing about that. It's massive. Like, you want to talk about conventions. Jeez. How did it get brighter? How did the sun come out more? That's weird. I suppose it just changed angle or something like that. Sun always moving around. Anyway, um... Let's see here. Uh, never understood the hundred dollar badge to have the right to spend more money. I know it's well, yes, I get it too. I like I don't I don't understand that either. I think with Gen Con, I think it's so big that it's about security. Honestly, it's something like that. I don't know. Just so randos don't come in and try to steal stuff or something. I I I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, it's just it's so big. So yeah. Um, let's see here. Room booked for TMX, and I have two factions painted for Steel Rift. Looking forward to playing. Nice. Have you had any experiences with Clash of Steel? I haven't. I saw people walking around with it, obviously. Like, the people who did, like, VIG or whatever, uh, the big swag bag. I think they got a, a copy of the big box of Clash of Steel, but I don't, I have not, I have not tried it out. Thumbnail for this. When does the album drop? I don't know. We're going to have to probably record something. Um... Poster printer is software you could use to print out posters of any size with an A4 printer, and then you could use to create a stencil uh, to put your logo on your wall. It's by Royal Soft. I think I've heard of that in the past. I, again, I could just trace it with a projector, uh, which would probably be okay. If I need to go in Depticon next year, it'll be my first game con. Nice. I love hatchbacks. That I'll never have my 90s dream CRX. That was a really small hatchback. Like, my hatchback is like a four-door, which I, I like four-door hatchbacks. I think that's a good time. But I remember the CRX. There was a guy in town locally that had a CRX that he, he painted completely with, like, chalkboard paint, and then he would write stuff in, 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 in chalk on it. I don't know. It was kind of strange. <laughs> I mean, it was an older one, obviously. Uncle Adam, the master of painting base edges, prime contrast varnish, and let that... that... Well, see, okay, here's the thing about painting base uh, edges. I am... Now it seems dark. I keep messing with this. This is part of being a photographer, I guess. Anyway, um, the thing about base edges is I have a brush specifically designed for it. Not, like, from the factory. Like, it's just the most beat-up, crappy brush that I own but it makes this shape that's just perfect for base edges. I think the big deal is to, um, there's a type of brush called a filbert, I believe, and I, I should really buy one and see if that's basically what I'm doing here with the brushes that, with the stuff that I like to paint. You know what I mean? So I don't know, we'll see. But that's kind of the deal is that this filbert is, is a shape where it's got kind of a rounded tip instead of coming to a point. Um, and, but that helps 
just because then you're not. The thing I find with this brush is that when I'm running along the edge of the base and I'm kind of running it along this way, you don't want to paint this way because then you, you could then accidentally get it up onto the stuff that you already painted on the base and you want to just run along the edges like this. And for some reason, a good, nice pointed brush doesn't do it as well as a screwed up brush that's sort of straightish almost. So I don't know. My brother-in-law and family live in Copenhagen. They seem to like it. Well, sure. I'm sure Copenhagen is lovely. I would like to potentially if next year, if I have more time, I would like to go and spend a little bit of time in Copenhagen. Like I said, do some street photography because I like that kind of stuff. It's interesting how influential Wisconsin is in tabletop uh, gaming, war, and RPGs. We get so much from it. Thanks. Well, sure. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, I think it's the Midwest in general. And that's just because, you know, in winter, there's not much else to do. Unless you're into skiing, you know, or snowboarding and stuff like that. Greetings from Denmark. How you doing? Um, let's see here. Um, still trying to cobble together my hobby travel painting kit for July. Got to do it. Uh, lean and mean. Sure. Our host is great. Denmark is a chill country. I thought so. Yeah. Yeah. Tried Blackout, love the simple rules. We'll get into the minis soon. They look great. Yeah, the rules are very nice. And again, it's in a really tiny book. Um, like this is the entirety of the book for for Blackout. It's this little spiral bound little thing here. Um, yeah, and it's a, I don't know, 44 pages. And... Um, you know, it's just got really kind of cool stuff going on, uh, scenarios, you know. Um, it's a very tactical game in that pretty much if you get a hit, you're dead. Like, it's not so much about like, oh, I took a wound and I have four wounds left. It's pretty much, oh, you got hit, you're probably dead. It's it's rare that you're not. Um, so you have to be very much more, A, the games go a lot quicker, and B, you have to be a lot more, uh, paying a lot more attention to cover and things like that and everything and stuff. See, now it's too dark again. God bless America. Who's messing with the sun? That's what I want to know. <clears throat> Need to watch that 52 miniatures video on how using less paints will make you a better painter. I just don't like blending. I'll be honest with you. So, sounds like you enjoyed your stay in Denmark. If you come by uh, Roskilde, I don't think I'm pronouncing that properly, right? Uh, do come and say hi at the FLGS. I had an idea on the way back. I was like, you know, when we do this, it, if we do this next year, which I assume we will, but I don't know, you know, who's to say, but if we do this next year, we should at some point set up like a, some sort of meet, meet and greet type of thing, possibly at a game store. Um, and then that way, you know what I mean? Because then people would have, we would let people know about it on social and do all that kind of stuff. And then people could come and hang out if they wanted to and meet us and stuff. People who might not have the chance to do so at like American conventions like Nova and, you know, Adepticon and things like that. So if we're there, you know, and we're bumping into people in the street, like on my way out. So like, like I mentioned, we bumped into that guy who was outside having a cigarette, the bartender at the place we knew who we were. And then as I was leaving uh, Copenhagen, I'm in the Copenhagen airport. I walk by this bar that we had spent some time in on our way in waiting for Sam to show up. It was me and Phil, the Glacial Geek, and um, and Adam from Army Painter. So the three of us are sitting there, you know, having a pint and whatever. And it's kind of like an opening, kind of like on a corner inside the, the uh, you know, the airport bar. It's not like there's like a door you go through and you're locked off. It's a little bit more open, kind of like restaurants are very frequently when you walk by them in um, uh, airports. Anyway... I'm like walking to get to my gate and this guy comes walking out of that bar that we had been in, you know, four or five days ago. And he was like, Uncle Adam. And I was like, oh, hi. And so we talked and he was very, very nice. And I've had that happen before in airports, but it's usually when going to or from a convention where a lot of other gamers are going to the same convention, you know, or trade show or something like that. But there was nothing really else. There was no convention going on in Denmark. It was just the five of us showing up, you know to do a bunch of stuff. So it was just strange. It was the first time I was like stopped in an airport that wasn't, you know, attached to some sort of gaming convention. When you go to gaming conventions or things like that, you'll be in an airport and be like, that guy's going in the same place I am. And you can just tell, you know, but this was not that case. Um, he was also super nice as well. So, so yeah, it was, it was interesting. Uh, what was the best food you had in Denmark? Um, I had a really good burger. 
We went to this French cafe in, um, I think it was in Skanderborg. I could be wrong. Uh, but it was, um, like Bodit wasn't able to come along, uh, but he later on he asked how he's like, well, did you have the crepes? And I was like, no, I had a hamburger. He's like, you went to a French place and you had a hamburger. I'm like, it was a really good hamburger. It was, um, but yeah, it was like the bun, and then the burger was like just a giant ball, and it wasn't a meatball, but it was it wasn't flat like a burger usually, and then it had the top bun just sort of sat on it like a like a uh, you know a saucy chapeau if you will, um, and. Uh, I've also noticed that that people in from Denmark have a tendency, like especially when they come to America, they eat their hamburgers with a knife and fork, which honestly is not a bad idea, especially because I have a beard. And then like if you're doing this, then you get stuff. But when you're cutting it up, and it's less likely to get stuff, so that's actually not bad. And this particular hamburger required it because it was you know a sphere, but it was very good. I liked it a lot. Um, let's see here. Your late night ride with Dolly singing nine to five sounds like a movie intro. I mean, maybe. Best food in Denmark is always the hot dogs from the hot dog stands. I so many people were like, "Oh, the hot dogs," and I was like, "I never came across a hot dog." Our painter is Danish. Thought they were Swedish. Nope, Danish. It means Pharaoh's cigars. Well, then why is that a see? But the but but it's a game store. That's I, what is it? I guess I don't get the thing. Uh, has a store in Aarhus and Copenhagen, uh, one of the bigger hobby stores. Yeah, there's a bunch of them, evidently. Oh, yeah. It's a title of a Tintin, Tintin comic. I'm familiar-ish with Tintin. Directly translated a Tintin story, this chain group of stores is amazing. Not, yeah, no, they're, they're I, like I said, really nice. Also, while we were walking around Aarhus, like every other store was a place selling electric bicycles, too, which was cool. Um, let's see here. Mostly sell GW stuff. A few people play other games to make it worth the shelf space. I, I guess I get that, but like the amount of hobby stuff they have is also like so deep that I'm like, well, but you know, how frequently do, do these pieces actually move? You know, so I, I I felt like they could honestly probably have a little bit more. Like I said, they had some things. Like I didn't see any Stargrave or Frostgrave models, but I did see War Games Atlantic. Um, there were some other ones like that. So yeah, I don't know. I'll have to, um, I, I, I would like to see a little bit more of that, but I, obviously the stuff that makes the most money is obviously GW. So speaking of time zones, I'll be flying over the Philippines in June. First time in 19 years. Wow. Um, whoops. Uh, let's see here. Tintin Comics, Time Zones. I think David Chandler of Historic War Games fame retired to Niagara in the Lake. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Morning from Ontario, painting some Dark Angels with the Air Triad system. Nice. That's how I did mine. Yeah. Heard something funny. Since 40K takes place in our universe, all custodes are descendants of Waffle House employees. I mean, those Waffle House employees aren't messing around. Let's just say that. They do make nice uh, faux neon signs with the flexible LED uh, filaments. Yeah, that's the thing, is that when you see neon signs in a lot of places these days, they're not neon because that's really expensive and it's glass and stuff like that. A lot of them are the LEDs, and they still look real good. Um, what paint cleaner machine do you use? You had a video several years ago, and I wanted to know if you still use that one. A paint cleaner machine, like to, get, like, to strip a model? I still generally use a... a, a ultrasonic cleaner but i also use um this stuff that you get from the dollar store or from lowe's that is called la's totally awesome it's bright yellow um if you get it from the dollar store it costs roughly at, well like a dollar and a quarter these days but yes you know what i mean um let's see here why not make the acrylic logo a spot on this show the shelf behind you would make a great spot I mean, yeah, it's possible. Yeah, that's not ter a terrible idea. Although there's not a plug on that wall back there, so I'm going to have to figure out something there. Finally got my box to this Quar's War Clash of Rifles. Anyone else stoked about this new release? I am, and I was. they said they were going to send me a copy, and then I haven't seen it, so I'm assuming they're not. Um, I'll have to order it, I guess. But yeah, I watched a little bit of uh, uh, 
like about a report on on tabletop which aka used to be uh beast of war and um yeah i'm, I'm interested Howdy from Texas. Visited Denmark a few years back and loved it. The museums in Copenhagen are amazing and free. Did you visit the National Museum or Armory while you were there? Nope. It's, the only museum we went to was the Viking Museum, which was really cool. When the basement is done, do you think you might get Vinci V over for a collab? Possibly, yeah. When the basement is done, it, shush. Matthew Sears, moderator Matt. How you doing? Hope you're doing well. But shush, it's... You were, I don't know if you were here earlier, but that's the... This is, yeah. The, the, the plan for as soon as the T TMX is done... I'm not going anywhere from June 3rd until the 31st of July, which is when I leave for Gen Con. So I'll be working on things there. But it's good to see you, moderator Matt. I was talking priming in my gift. My Army Painter Ruins and Cliff Terrain spray primer can just failed after about 20 seconds of priming. Any tips on solving the spray can valve fail? That's interesting. I have not come across, like it, like it doesn't spray anymore. I'm trying to think of, I remember that happened once on... Rust-Oleum or Krylon or some other brand where it just like, I don't know if it clogged internally or what happened. Um, if it's the actual nozzle itself, you might be able to put it like, you know, pull it out and um, soak it in something, though I don't know what, but you might want to look online. There might be something to soak it in that will then help clear it out. I don't know if it's hot water or if it's something else. I'm not sure. Um, let's see here. Um, boop, 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 boop. I can remember some games that aren't, weren't supposed to be mini agnostic, but were because they couldn't get minis made for key units. Sure. I'm sure you knew about them already, but I recently discovered huge miniatures, a small hobby supplier based in Ohio. They had their own paint line and tons of basing supplies. I bought some basing supplies at Adepticon this year from them. I bought a tub of like urban -y urban grit or something like that um but i haven't tried any of their paints or anything like that you can make tiny layouts that fit in storage boxes sections which may be disassembled and even modular layouts which can be disassembled in huge lay oh for trains oh that's pretty cool what's this about drugs uh well I, there's my you know prescription drugs that i take and stuff like that um that's probably what i was talking about with the backpack because that all normally i put that in my luggage but i think i ran out of space in my luggage so i'm like oh, i'll just slide in my backpack and then i went to adepticon last year without my backpack and then my wife had to drive me in my backpack but yes um let's see here so the thumbnail wondered when this album was going to drop you were not the first votan are the most inclusive got the bots as well sure yeah Morning from Rhode Island. Hope your trip was fun. It was. It was. Like I said, on the way there, not so much fun just because, I don't know, I, it was my first international flight. So that was um, long, you know, like this, the Minneapolis to Amsterdam was about eight hours. So that's, you know, and I can't sleep on planes. I wish I could. God, that would make things so much easier, but I just can't seem to sleep on planes. Um, so I watched, oh gosh, I watched this movie uh about blackberry like the, the the company that you know made the blackberries the little electronic devices and stuff like that um that was pretty good um i watched i don't know a couple different things um on the way back the guy sitting next to me i think watched dune 2 three times in a row i swear to god because it's a long flight like eight hours and it was just constantly running and I would just like glance over because he had it on his iPad. And I would glance over and I'd be like, I'm pretty sure that he already watched this part. But yeah, I think he just watched it over and over and over again, which is cool. You know, we did chat about it. He's like, it's so good. I'm like, I know. I'm like, I didn't realize it was out <clears throat> on digital. And I kind of assumed maybe he pirated it. And he's like, oh, yeah, like two days ago. I was so excited. <laughs> I was like, oh, great. You know. So anyway. Um... Hello from Denmark. Promise to come back when the weather is just a tiny bit better. It was lovely while we were there. There was one day when, did it rain? I maybe sprinkled, but otherwise it was nice. We had we had good weather, I thought. We were predominantly indoors, let's be honest. But, uh, you know, we're indoor kids. Uh, let's see here. Greetings from the Bath in Brigand. Only War Games related statement is watching the uh, uh, every other Sunday show. Nice. Many British model railway men also have uh, a ceiling in their layout room full of aircraft uh, or airfix aircraft. Nice. That makes sense. I get it. Yeah. Hello from Paraguay. I've been having fever dreams about turnips and downscaling to 15 millimeter Napoleonics. Interesting. 
I don't know if that's something that you ate, maybe? I don't know. Let's see here. Um, I'm Danish and follow your channel. What do you think of my country? It was very nice. I wish I could move there. I'll be honest with you. Um, like I was saying earlier, everybody was very nice. Uh, I liked the food. Um, the landscape is basically the same as Wisconsin. Like, Wisconsin is not particularly mountainous anyway. And uh, several people there told us that yeah, Denmark is relatively flat as well. Um, we have lakes. You guys have more ocean. Uh, so there's that. Um, and also, uh, the, uh, there were no, I, the whole time I was there, I never was like, no one in a loud motorcycle ever drove by. No one in a loud truck or a loud car that they've tuned up with a crazy muffler ever drove by. No one rolled coal the entire time I was there. Um, I only saw one pickup truck the entire time, you know, like that's, it's, it's, it's a nation of hatchback enjoyers and I am also a hatchback enjoyer. So that's also pretty good. Uh, are you optimistic about Age of Sigmar 4? <sighs> Slightly less now that they decided to get rid of as many models as they did. Um, between Beasts of Chaos and um, what's the other one that they got rid of? Hardcore. Like, obviously, they got rid of a lot of Stormcast, but not all the Stormcast, but Beast of Chaos. Oh, and then the, um, the whatever, Savage Orcs. Um... Yeah, that, that bums me out, I'll be honest with you. Uh, especially because I, I almost bought the Vanguard box for Beasts of Chaos because I assumed they were going to turn it into a Spearhead box like they're doing with a lot of the other boxes that were named Vanguard but will soon be called Spearhead. And so I was just like, you know, I could do a whole bunch of Goat Boys again. That'd be a lot of fun. I haven't painted Goat Boys in a minute. Um, and uh, that'd be cool. And then I was like, yeah, but Cities of Sigmar are newer, and I'm really kind of interested in doing that. So I'll do that, maybe do Goat Boys next. And then now I'm not doing Goat Boys. So, yeah, I don't know. We will see. Um, but that's not a good... I don't feel like that's a great... For me, at least, it doesn't come across as a great move. But I've heard a lot of stories about how historical games are not super friendly or inclusive. I wonder why. I yeah i don't know uh let's see here technically it's the earth moving around not the sun whoa that's a good point <laughs> that's science um hello from uruguay how you doing i miss big station wagons like you guys miss hatchbacks yeah yeah didn't see a lot of big SUVs over there either. Like some like mid-rangey ones, like, you know, a Honda CRV type size, but like the giant massive Escalades and stuff like that. Didn't see any of that stuff. I mean, I think a big portion of it is because the roads are smaller because they were built 800 years ago or whatever, you know, and they just weren't designed for big, giant, stupid, massive vehicles bigger than M4 Sherman tanks. Um, I could be wrong. Let's see here. After getting a, an SUV about 15 years ago, I will never, ever go back to a mere car. No, I, I don't want an SUV. Um, I can carry a 55-inch television in my hatchback. So I'm just saying. Because if the, the seats fold down, like even in the... They also fold up, like the back seats. Like you can fold them down flat, and then the whole back area is like open. Or you can take the seat part in the back seats and fold them up and then just slide something in, you know, the back. And it's uh, it's actually quite nice. Uh, it really ticks me off that Honda dis, dis, uh, discontinued that car. It, it doesn't make any sense. Because I see them everywhere. So, you know. Um, let's see here. We have a big show in my town I can just walk to each year. Then I join the local club and end up working the show most of the day. Well, that's pretty cool. Wisconsin is big for the plastic modeling hobby too. Really? Love to go to Prague and explore some Mucha originals. Oh, wow. Careful about expressing opinions about how where conventions should be run. It's how you end up running conventions. <laughs> well, yeah, no, that, that can't help for sure. Spiral bound, spiral bound A5 rule books are the bomb. All my Snarling Badger rules I had printed in A5 and Spiral Bound at the print shop. Nice. Did you drop the name of the band from the thumbnail pick? Uh, Nick and the Army Tones? I'm trying to remember. Somebody had a good name in the face, or not the Facebook, the Instagram thing. And I don't remember what it was. But I was like, oh, that's not bad. Excited about the Age of Sigmar comic troll style boxes, but I share your hatred of the vampire lord. Missed the old GW aristocratic looking vampire count courts. Yeah, yeah. Like, honestly, if I was going to do that box, the Soul Blight Grave Lords, I would... Swap that vampire out and use one of them from the Crimson Court uh, Warhammer Underworlds box. That's what I would end up using. Um, 
let's see here. Did Army Painter Lads teach you the Rodgrad? No, they did not. I don't I don't recognize that. French restaurant in Denmark and you eat American. Well, <laughs> you know. Like we like, let's see. Monday night we went to a Chinese buffet. Uh, and then Tuesday night we went to the French place, and then Wednesday night we went to the food market, the huge food market in Aarhus, and I had um, spicy pulled duck sandwich with uh, duck fat fries, which were delightful, but probably also not Danish. I think Bo was like, I think the guys working here are from Belgium, which would make sense. Um, yeah, so like we had Danish food to some degree in that, like we had those little cakes. They're kind of like a big cake pop. Um, they take like day old cakes and they sort of grind them all up and they make them into like another cake and then they put chocolate over the top and stuff like that and it's and sprinkles and it is like like I said it's like kind of like a cake pop and I had one of those and that was really good um, but like for lunch we would have um, one day we had sandwiches which are basically just like you know bread and then they've got like potato that you can slice and put on it and some mayo and that kind of crunchy um, onion stuff you know like little crunchy onion bits and um, beets and herring. I didn't have beets or herrings. I don't like either of those. But uh, they had tomatoes. They had cheese. They had um, that liverwurst kind of type stuff or whatever it's called. That was also really good. There was all kinds of stuff like that. That was a little bit more traditional, I guess. There was also a day, maybe Wednesday, where we had some sandwiches, which are generally something you eat closer to Christmas, I guess, in Denmark, where it's like, it's like a pork sandwich where some of the skin is real crunchy and crackly. And then it's like this big kind of bread. And this is a bread thing that you do. Like some people were eating with fork and knife, but it was definitely way easier to eat it that way. And it was, those were really good too. I can't remember what that was called. Um, but it was quite good. Uh, thank you for the stream. Are the, after the Army Painter collaboration and your experience with the hobby, what do you look for when you have to pick a new paint? Any tips you could share? Um, I think it's important to paint in a way that you feel comfortable. There are lots of different types of paints out there that are designed for specific paint styles to some degree. Um, the thing that I like about the Army Painter paints is that they can be used. We had this conversation at one point during um, the panel that I was, you know, we were we were videoing on like Wednesday morning, maybe. I forget exactly when it was. I think it was Wednesday morning um, where Sam said something very smart. You can thin a paint, but you can't thick a paint. So because these paints are very creamy, but not overly thick and they take water or they take them like the stabilizer, which is basically a fancy term for the new medium that they use for the um, Fanatic paints, you can thin them down. So if you're like trying to get a glaze, you can do that easily. You can put some on your wet palette, throw some water in there, throw some medium slash stabilizer in there, whatever. Um, and if you want a wet blend, you can throw some retarder in there so that you can blend it longer, all those things. Um, but if the paint starts thin, like it's like, like cuttlefish colors, for example, the original cuttlefish colors line were not glazes, but they were definitely translucent. They were not a heavy coverage type paint because the guy who designed them is a sketch painter. He paints by just like you just can almost like cross hatching and drawing and you just do it over and over and over again and kind of build up values and things like that. So his paints were designed that way. Now, from what I understand, his next line of paints that are going to be coming are going to be sort of standard opaque paints. So that's good. Um, but these paints, again, you can thin them if you want to go into glazing and, and, and things like that. But if you don't, they have very, very good coverage and they will spread a lot more because of the creaminess. So you can take them and like, I've done this a bunch where you just literally just put a glob of paint. They're always like, oh, two thin coats. You want to do two thin coats of paint so that you, but with this, you put it on there and it's like a, you know, it's a glob, but you can just keep spreading it. And then you pull it away from the, the detail areas and things like that. And then it won't fill in or obscure detail. And you can just keep spreading it and moving it around before you even have to go back to the, you know, to the palette again. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting material because it does keep spreading. When I go to trade shows, these first couple of trade shows this year, you know, you're, you're demoing it for people and showing it to them and you give them the brush. The first thing they do, especially if they've painted before, is they take that brush and they get a brush load full of water and then go to the palette. And I'm always like, don't, 
like dry that brush off, you know, get it, get it. So it's still damp, I guess, but dry it off and then just take a glob of paint and put it on the model straight, which doesn't seem like a thing you should do. And then just continue to keep moving it around. Like I painted the entire shield on like some orc guy from Mantic. Um, I just took like one glob of green paint and I just start, kept working it and moving it and all that kind of stuff. And I did like the entire front part of the shield before I had to go back for the second glob of paint. And it kind of like sort of self levels and everything like that. So you don't really see brush strokes as you do that. And as you spread it out more, um, it's really interesting. But again, that's the way that I like to paint. And you also have the option if you want to do glazing to then thin it down. Um, but you can't take a thin paint and thicken it up. You know, like you can't add like flour to it like you would do to thicken up a, a, a gravy or something like that. So if you are a glaze painter, you know, all day, if you are a, the type of painter that paints in like sketch style, like the guy, uh, Ryan, I think his name is from Cuttlefish, then it's important to know that ahead of time and then kind of, you know, pick a paint based off of that. But um, you could also do that same type of style with Army Painter by just thinning it down. So um, yeah, but it's all about well, it's, about, it's all about that, the material of the paint, and then the other thing is the number of colors. Like if you're a person who loves to blend, then you don't need a ton of colors in your line. But if you're a person like me who's like, I don't like to blend, I like to be able to go back and recreate my uh, recipes very easily for what happens, then having 162 different opaque colors, not including metallics, skin tones, uh, all that other stuff, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a really good line for that too. So yeah. Um, whoops, everything moved. Let's see. You learn any Danish words? Tak, which means thanks. That's the only one that I learned. Kringle is the way to go for Danish pastry. See, we do Kringle here in Wisconsin because a lot of Danes moved here, Danes and Germans. Um, so I'm familiar with Kringle. Uh, we did not have any Kringle while I was there, sadly. I, that was the one thing I kind of missed, I think. Came for paint talk, and now I'm hungry. Well, yeah. Let's see here. Burgers in Australian cafes have needed knives and forks for. They were bloody huge. That makes sense, too. Um, let's see. There you go. Uh, greens from Norway, north of Denmark. Currently painting my first 40K miniatures ever at the age of 50. Nice. Uh, having ogled Warhammer. Ogled? Oogled? Ogled. Uh, Warhammer um, since the 80s and 90s in my local uh, comic store. Nice. Um, hello from SoCal. How you doing, Blake? Hope you're doing well. Given that French fries aren't French, I'm a guess Danishes aren't actually Danish. They don't call them that. In I've been told that, that the, what we think of as a Danish over here in the States is technically a thing that they make in Denmark, but they don't call it that. It's called something else. Uh, the amount of hobby stuff in the Aarhus store is because the manager is part of the Danish show paint community. He tries to push the painting part of the hobby. That makes sense. Like they had this huge case full of like, like there were pieces in there from like Roman Lapat and like all kinds of like, like Sam and um, Thomas were both just like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Like they knew all these people and stuff. So that was very cool. Take the band on tour. A couple places in Denmark. Maybe make the detour to Nottingham and see, uh, to, to visit, see and be seen. Mm -hmm. Uh, Danishes are the Danish version of essentially Australian or Austrian recipe. No kidding. Uh, first chance to catch the live Sunday show in over a year. Well, good to see you, Mountaineer. New job, new weekend freedom. Nice. Good to hear. Circling back to uh, Pharaoh's Cigar, uh, originally mainly a comic store. Uh, the name is from a comic and then expanding to all things geeky, but kept the name. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, have you ever done any events or will attend any events in Vancouver, BC? Not so far. I haven't. I mean, my wife and I went to Seattle in 2008. Uh, that was, <laughs> we went to PAX. Uh, well, back then it was just PAX because there wasn't other ones. Um, nowadays it's PAX Prime. Uh, but um, yeah, no, I haven't been back. And well, I take that back. I was actually at a conference in 2010. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, I haven't been back over there for a while. Um, so yeah, no, I've, I don't know. I don't know any, any big events over there, frankly. So that's a good question. Where did Nick Ramondo go? Oh, he's, um, you can see him. He's, he's back there on the other side of the glass. Uh, my wife just hasn't put him back in, in here. Um, she had a show. She had, did she have a, I think she had a thing last week. She had like, um, practice with her, her bell choir and she was playing cello along with the bell choir. 
Your copy of This Car's War may still arrive. They're behind in their shipments. Ah, okay. My $60 sonic cleaner died and I had to get an $85 replacement. Was trying to look for a proper one that wouldn't die in a year's time, but they cost thousands of dollars. What a difference. Wow. Like, I think mine cost 35 bucks, but it's also real small. Um, I've seen those much bigger ones. I know, like, the one that um, Casey uses on uh, eBay Miniature Rescue. His is, like, big, but I think his is also has heated, too. Mine doesn't have heat. Hmm. Compressed air blown into the can with a blowgun handle, blow needle. Uh, oh, well, yeah. Sitting in JFK, uh, still on my way home. Hey, Glacial Geek, how you doing, man? But I had to come say hi because I miss you. Absolutely, yeah. No, I was in JFK for about two and a half hours, um, and it was okay. I'd never been to JFK before. It was, uh, Copenhagen was a way better airport. It's very, very nice. But yeah, it was me. Uh, it was Glacial Geek there. It was um, Sam Lenz, obviously, and uh, Eric from Eric's Hobby Workshop uh, YouTube channel. Those are the four of us, the... Uh, the factory team, uh, AKA the world's worst boy band. And, um, yeah, Eric and I left on Thursday and then Phil and Sam, I think Sam left yesterday. Phil left is still leaving in the process of trying to get home today. Um, and then I think that Adam, uh, he lives down in New Orleans and he got back last night. So, um, but yeah, those guys kind of stayed, well, uh, Phil and Sam stayed and did like some sightseeing and some stuff like that in Copenhagen. And um, I think that um, Adam was just doing more meetings and things like that and then left. Is there an actual difference between the hobby spray paint and hardware store paint uh, brands? I'm always torn and scared of obscuring details. For years, well, honestly, the, the spray paints that I use the most are this. I use uh, automotive, uh, automotive sandable or sandable automotive primer. Duplicolor used to be my brand of choice, but it's getting a little bit harder to find. But Sandable Automotive Color, uh, or you know, is is a pretty good spray. And then um, the other one that I use all the time is um, uh, camouflage paint. So both Krylon and Rust-Oleum make camouflage paint, and they're pretty good. Um, so you've got with the camouflage line, you've got black, you've got dark brown, you've got two shades of like kind of khaki slash tan and two shades of like olive green. Um, they don't match perfectly from Krylon to um, Rust-Oleum, but you know, they're, they, they're pretty good. Uh, and I use those all the time. And they're also super matte, super flat matte, which means that they will hold on to paint that you paint over them very, very easily. Um, you never want like a glossy primer, I find. So yeah, uh, those are, I mean, the only like actual like brand brand that I use sometimes for um, Rattle Can uh, that, you know, is an actual like hobby brand is um, specific colors. So I'm trying to color match for uh, Army Painter stuff. I'll use those. Um, and I did at some point GW sent me some cans of um, White Scar, which is not bad. Like a lot of white Rattle Cans can be real speckly. They could just, it's just nature of the beast. And the white car, white, white scar is very smooth. Um, so that's not too bad, but yeah. Uh, let's see here. Hope you had a great trip. Uh, what was the best food you had there? That's a good question. Like I said, I think it was probably, it might've been that burger. It was really good. Um, although that, Spicy pulled duck was also quite good. Uh, would you ever review other new war games from indie developers? I don't really do reviews per se. Like I don't like I'll talk about games that I like, things like that. I'll do I'll you know I'll mention, but I don't have a tendency to go through and do straight reviews. I don't know that I'm. I don't know. There's part of me that doesn't think that I'm necessarily qualified to do that. You know what I mean? So there's that. But like I do, like I said, I do, I do come across like games, you know, like Blackout. That's a, a kind of an indie game. Um, I, you know, I love, uh, I always talk about space weirdos and things like that. So, you know, there's, that happens sometimes. And people sometimes, you know, reach out and send stuff or whatever, ask my opinion and that kind of stuff. And, I, you know, sometimes I get a, a thing and I look at it and it's just, I don't want to be like, well, this is terrible. You know what I mean? Like I, so I, I have a tendency to focus on stuff that I think is cool and just don't focus on stuff that I don't. So, um, 
yeah, but I, I generally, like I said, I don't do reviews per se. I did do one review once in the entire like history of the channel, and it was when I, I did a review of um, the the Krylon camouflage paints. Actually, it's real old, <laughs> like really, really old. Uh, backpacks and drugs can be a problem with traveling, or so I hear. I mean, it was again just, <laughs> it was my backpack, and I was driving to, but it was, and the drugs were like you know metformin, and. Um, something for cholesterol and you know boring stuff like that but stuff i still gotta take adam says international flight was long me laughs in australian oh sure no i get it uh, yeah uh one of the secrets to surviving air travel after you get where you're going take off your shoes and your socks and walk around on the rug barefoot and make fists with your toes i didn't have carpet it was but i was thinking about that on the way there that's from um uh uh, the thing, um, Die Hard. Thank you. Um, it was from Die Hard, uh, and I thought about that, and then I got to the hotel, and I'm like, "There's no carpet. This is it's like a wood floor, or like some sort of I don't know laminate." But it was nice. It was a nice little. Uh, uh, it was interesting because it's a very small hotel room, but it was nice and comfy and cozy and stuff like that. And it it's an interesting kind of um, comparison to the hotel rooms at the Rio when I was there for LVO, which haven't really been updated since the 90s they're okay they're they're fine they're, but but they're massive like and it's not like oh my god there's like a sitting room and there's a den and over here there's a pool it's just a really huge room i'm like why is there so much space between the bed and that chair over there like what what am i supposed to do with all this yeah it was just really strange it's like it has all the normal stuff in it that a regular normal hotel room was it's just everything was 20 feet away from everything else like why is the nightstand way over there it's just very odd um yeah, so they are upgrading the, the actual rooms at the Rio. So it'll be interesting to see if they have them done by next year. I mean, they probably won't get any smaller. I don't know. Maybe they'll just put, I don't know, like a, a race car track in there for like remote control cars. That'd be kind of fun to do at night. Um, let's see here. Everybody using rattle cans should know how to keep the nozzle clean by turning the can upside down and spraying out the remaining paint until it is nothing but propellant. Then clean the tip of the nozzle. Yes. Uh, English is a mandatory course in public school in Denmark. We even have a third language option for later. Nice. Yeah, no, I mean, I didn't come across a person who didn't know how to speak English uh, there. So that was, as a person who didn't know how to speak Danish, it was actually quite helpful. <laughs> yeah. Were there a lot of cows? I don't think I saw any cows. I saw horses. Maybe I saw a cow. Not as many as you see in Wisconsin, but I saw horses. Um, I had four years of French language instruction growing up here and cannot speak more than a couple phrases. I took two years of French in high school, and I can only say je désire fromage, which is um, means I really like cheese, like maybe in a way that's possibly illegal. Um, that's best I know. Um... Let's see. Last time I did the barefoot thing, I got into a mess at some tower in LA. That'll, yeah, that'll happen. That's why, you know, take your shoes off, you know, so you don't get a bunch of glass in your feet. Um, let's see here. Sounds like the, those types of rattle cans don't have a tube going all the way to the bottom. Oh, that's a bummer. Let's see here. Car prices in Denmark are absurd. And that doesn't surprise me, I suppose. I wish midsize was our largest vehicle outside of 18 wheelers. Can't afford big cars. There was, I mean, one of the painters, he had a real nice, uh, what was it? Um, it was a Volkswagen. And it was electric. There's a lot of electric cars while I was there too. Um, ID4 maybe? It was real nice. I, I was like, I kind of want one myself. And then I looked at the prices here, like in, in America, and they were like, like it starts at 40 grand. And I was like, eh. Uh, SUVs suck too much gas and their parts cost way more in many cases, though I did like my Explorer. Hmm. 
My birthday is right in the middle of Nova this year, and it's maybe a 30-minute drive. Uh, since I'm still learning to play 40K, is it worth going my first gaming con, even if I don't intend to play? Like, if it's if you're 30 minutes away, definitely go and check it out, just to kind of get the lay of the land. So just, you know, take a look at the vending area, kind of walk around and see what you can see. It's a smart move, I think. Um, and then you can make a decision better for, like, say, like next year, if you wanted to get into it and play. The trick is, okay, so if you're just still learning to play 40K, the normal tournaments are probably not for you. Um, the tournaments at these big conventions, the people get real serious about them. I don't know that I would go into a tournament like that. There are probably some tournaments that will be referred to as friendlies. You know, oh, this is a friendlies tournament. Mm, sort of. It's still, you know, a lot. Um, I would look into, frankly, if you're interested in tournament play, like hardcore tournament play, I would start at local shops and try to get into some tournaments there. I mean, obviously you want to like still keep learning and try to, you don't want to show up to a tournament and be like, hey, this is the first time I ever played because those people are going to be like, all right. Um, and some of them would be jerks about it. Some would be nice about it, but it's just, you know. Um, but it is, it, it, it is a thing that I would definitely try to learn and play with some friends groups or some local people or play at the local shop or something like that just to start to get, you know, get your legs underneath you. And, um, but like if, yeah, if your first ever event is going to like a big convention like LVO or Nova or Adepticon and playing in like the championship, that's going to be a rough one. You're just going to get, yeah. Um, but there are also demo things that you can do as well. So that's, you know, to learn more as well. Um, I did make uh, homemade lever postage. That's not how it's pronounced, I bet. Is that the, like the liver paste stuff? That stuff was good. I liked it. But see, I've always liked um, like Braunschweiger, like liverwurst and stuff like that. Put that on some bread. It's pretty good stuff. This is the fun of the old station wagon. Mom had a 79 Pontiac Bonneville Safari. Fold down the back seats. The back door would take a tailgate and you could load in full sheets of plywood. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Danes are very environmentally conscious, so massive gas-guzzling SUVs are not popular. Also, fuel is, fuel is silly expensive compared. Yeah, we did the math at one point. We stopped at a Circle K. That was the thing that was interesting, too. The big three brands that I recognized everywhere were Circle K, um, which evidently started in Denmark. I did not realize that. I just, whenever I think of Circle K, I'm just like, strange things are afoot at the Circle K from, you know, um, Bill and Ted. Um, but yeah, Circle K was everywhere. And then their 7-Eleven was everywhere, except the 7-Elevens looked like Starbucks. Like in this country, a 7-Eleven is like a convenience store gas station. In that country, they when you drive by, I don't know what the hell's going on inside there, but all the buildings, they look like like it's it's fancy. And they're all over the, ho the um, airport too. And all the kiosks are very fancy. It's got the 7-Eleven, like, goofy, like, you know, green and orange logo. But every, everything else is, like, squared off wood and mm, it, just stylish and fancy. And I'm like, that's weird. But we never went in one. And I should have. Uh, and then there was uh, Burger King. was the other big brand that was everywhere. And there it's Burger King. But they sell beer. So that's nice, too. Um, what was I talking about? Um, gas guzzling. Oh, right. So we were sitting at the... We were sitting at the one, yeah, after the Dolly Parton experience, we were sitting there at uh, Circle K at one point for reasons. I don't remember why. I was in the back. But we were trying to do the math to figure out what, oh, I know what it was. Adam had to go to the bathroom and Thomas wanted something to drink. So we did that and we did the math, me and Bo, and figured out that gas is about roughly $8 a gallon over there. So, because they sell it, it was like 14 something kroners per liter or something i don't know it was a whole thing we basically did the math for conversion and da, 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 and eventually figured out it's around a little over eight bucks a gallon right now which is you know a hard um to be fair when i filled up on the way to leave chicago it was five dollars a gallon for the mid-grade stuff and here where i live the high grade stuff is four dollars a gallon so you know what are you gonna do Saw Denmark, and as a Dane, had to click. Absolutely. So I was in Denmark from... I left Saturday of last week. Got there Sunday, and then I was there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then left on Thursday. So I was there for um, hanging out with uh, the... Because I'm part of the uh, Army Painter Factory team. So it was me and the other three members of the factory team uh, going through the factory. 
and uh, also in HQ and doing all that kind of stuff. It was our first, my first time in Denmark. I think it was everybody's first time in Denmark except for Adam, of course, who works for them and goes over to Denmark multiple times per year. Um, and so, yeah. I print my SP stuff in traditional way, doing it at work. Gotcha. You get four or five Gen Xers in a photo and they can't help looking like a rock band. I don't know that any of those guys are Gen X. I'm Gen X, but the rest of those guys are all millennials. I'm the old one of that group. Like Sam hasn't hit 40 yet. And I'm pretty sure that um, that Phil hasn't. I don't think any of those guys have hit 40 yet. Maybe, but yeah, I'm 52. So I'm Gen X, but those guys, no, not so much. Uh, Meta, owners of Instagram, appear to be dropping AI-generated content into Instagram. Are you concerned about your IG content being borrowed by their bots? Uh, I mean, if there was any way to stop these morons, uh, I, I guess I would, but there's not. Like, all of these generative AI companies, are their business model is based off of plagiarism and theft. So, uh, you know criminal is going to criminal. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. I, I, if there was a way that I could say, oh, please don't, don't, please don't, you know, reference my stuff when you're for your uh, generative AI bots, uh, I, you know, and even if you said click here to make it so that doesn't happen, they're still going to do it. You know, there's ways around all that stuff. That's the way technology works. It's not until a bunch of them start getting sued really, really, really hard. <laughs> like, you know, Getty is doing right now, Getty Images, who I'm not a fan of, but they have brought a multi-trillion dollar uh, lawsuit against, I think it's OpenAI or MidJourney, one of those dumb companies. Um, I'm really looking forward for that all going away. Like machine learning, that's a different story. I'm a fan of machine learning. But generative AI, where it does the thing by basically ripping off the rest of the internet, that can die off sooner versus later. And as from what I've been hearing, the generative AI models, because they're now reading so much other generated AI stuff, it's starting to degrade. And I don't think that they're going to have a way to make that better at any time soon. So let's hope uh, that that all happens soon. I'm not a fan of generative AI, so just FYI. I go around in BMW here, bus metro walk. Nice. There's also, like I said, a lot of electric bicycles. I saw that too. And just regular bicycles too. But we, as we were walking around Aarhus, like every other like shop was a bicycle shop. And the, the windows were all just full of electric bicycles, which were generally spending, costing between three and four grand. But, you know, if, you, if you're on your bike a whole bunch and you, know, you commute that way, it makes sense. Uh, Ram Kulger, is that the thing with the cake where it's all... It, and it's a because it, those were good. I like that. Salt licorice is an acquired taste, but even sweet black licorice is divisive. I am not a black licorice fan, but my wife is. So I brought her back two different types of like salted black licorice, uh, admittedly from the airport. But still, you know, I brought her back some 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 stuff that she likes. The pork roast sandwich that was that was really good. Like I said, kind of crunchy in some spots, but the, like the you know the the crackly the crackling skins, it's quite nice. Um, you told me it's easier for Norwegians from different parts of the country to talk to each other in English than it is to understand the dialects. Huh? I get that. I could eat black licorice as a kid, but the smell alone turns me off now. Same with black jelly beans. Yeah, I've never liked black licorice ever. My wife does. Um, let's see here. Too much ouzo in my younger days to even think about licorice now? Oh, yeah, no. Like, that's one of those things that you're like, oh, that's not licorice. And then you smell it, and you're like, oh, that's licorice. But it's, you know, like, white, you know? Gum Arabic can thicken paint. Never used it. Hmm. I've never come across that. Cuttlefish opaques were available at Adepticon, both Genesis boxes. Nice. Yeah, like I said, I'd heard that that was on its way. Hello from Argentina. How you doing? I had a terrible... Oh, dang. Everything moved. Um, in fact, da, da, da. Let's see here. There we go. Gum Arabic. Okay. Hello from Argentina. Had a terrible experience with a youngish lad with anisette, a black licorice flavor. Vowed never again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, thicken paint with cornstarch. Mm, I don't think that's a good idea either. Eh, tastier brush to lick. I don't know if it would make tastier. I don't know. Tried blending. Respect blending. Not for me, though. Sure, I get it. Uh, now that you've been to Scandinavia, can we expect some more Morkborg content or something like that? I mean, Morkborg being a, a role-playing game, it's not necessarily what I focus on, though I do own the book and, and a bunch of expansions and stuff like that just because they're an absolute hoot to read, in my opinion. Um, but yeah. But I do enjoy uh, Forbidden Psalm, uh, The Last War, and kill sample process, which are all based off of Morkborg, but they're, you know, miniature skirmish games. Goobertown Hobbies, how you doing? Goobertown Hobbies has been to the uh, uh, headquarters there in Denmark as well. Uh, I've been uh, gradually replacing my Citadel colors with matches from uh, Army, or AK, gotcha. Um, let's see here. Black licorice is gross. I think it's like cilantro. Maybe. <laughs> Used to work at Faros Sagar. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that proper, properly, but I'm trying to. Fun times. It's a great looking shop. Absolutely. Just got the mega set and it seems to be working well. Painting Western Zombicide for my mini agnostic games like Pulp Alley. Creamy is a better word than smooth. I don't know about the, I don't, I didn't know about the don't thin. I mean, you, it's not that you can't, it's not that you, if you want to thin it because you like to paint with like thinner paints and do like multiple layers, you can do that. But a lot of paints that are thicker, let's say Citadel paints from GW, you have to thin it to make it even usable. Hence the whole too thin coats coming thing coming out of, you know, Games Workshop land. In this situation, I don't think you need to do that. If you're looking for coverage and you're not looking for glazing or blending or anything like that, I would tell you just to go bloop and then put it onto the model and start spreading it around and you'll be kind of surprised. Do a test with something first, you know, just see what you think. Uh, dumped all my paints and went with life color. I don't think I'm familiar with them. Used to play a lot of magic before lockdown hit, then got the, hey, want to try this painting stuff speech? And then I was hooked. Well, that's, you know, that's cool. Um, get uh, easy off oven cleaner. Yeah, but you only want to use that on metal. Don't use easy off oven cleaner on plastic because it can make plastic a little squishy sometimes from what I've been told. I have never tried it, but I've been told that that's, mm, but on metal, yeah, great. Not a, not a problem. Um, let's see here. Used to live in NYC and I loathe JFK. That said LGA, uh, LaGuardia. Used to be so much worse. Now La LGA is astonishingly nice. Yeah, I've never been to LaGuardia. Did y'all see Adepton got moved? Uh, I'm happy it's in my state now. Uh, we did talk about it a little bit earlier. Yes, no. That actually, that happened, that the information came out while I was in Denmark. Uh, it was one night um, in the hotel lobby. Sam and Eric were playing this mech game called Flames of Orion that is written by Steve from the Hive Scum podcast, which we're fans of. And um, so they were playing that on like a table and they were using like salt shakers and stuff like that as terrain and whatever. And uh, Adam and I were kind of just sitting there drinking pints and chatting and, and, and relaxing. And then, like, that's when the email started to go off and everything, because that's kind of when the announcement was. Because we're, well, Denmark is like seven hours ahead of um, Central Time Zone, I guess. So, yeah. So it was pretty late, but then it came out and we were, like, reading a lot of, you know, posts and things like that. But, yeah, it was it was very cool. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I think it's great. And not just because it's, like, an hour closer to my house. Uh, that doesn't really, I think it's just going to be a really good move that allows it to grow also makes it easier for people to get hotel rooms and there's also a lot of places to go eat and do other things around there you know so yeah uncle adam how do you feel about the female custodes situation that's been ingratiating itself amongst the community i'm all for it i think that um i don't have a problem with it at all i don't have a problem with any of that kind of stuff i'm a big fan i mean i'm not going to buy any custodes just because i think custodes don't they frankly shouldn't be an army. I don't think they should be a playable army, personally. Um, but, you know, the money is what they why they do that. So, uh, let's see here. Factory Team, the world's worst boy band with such hits as Thin Your Paint and Tau for Sale. I mean, you know, that Tau for Sale is a banger. Um, morning from a cloudy Southern California. Thoughts on Cyberpunk Combat Zone. I'm thinking that I want to get back to gluing the rest of the parts together and painting it. Uh, I've got like half of them done, like built. Um, 
and they don't they're not hard to build and they got bright again uh, they're not hard to build but it is um there's a there's a, there's a, a, a non insubstantial amount of mold lines i'm not gonna lie uh so there's that but then they go together super crazy easy so there's that too my plan is to paint them up and then basically do like enamel washes on them to kind of make everything kind of grimy um Maybe oil wash. I'm not 100% sure yet. I keep meaning to use oil washes and I have the oil paints and I have the mineral spirits and I have the little metal dishes, so you, should, you know, and all that stuff, but I just don't seem to do it. So I need to do that. Um, but I can't really do any outside hobby outside of my uh, live streams uh, until after the game gets finished, which is in progress. So hopefully at some point, like uh, as part of my, you know, just general hobby stuff, or maybe I'll start doing it on, um, on Twitch, but I do want to get those uh because i have the combat zone like main box and so i want to get those guys ready to go because it's a cool game um i remember when 40k was the preserve of bookish nerds with difficulty and normal social sh sh you know, social interactions i mean you know some may say it still is but it depends you are definitely seeing a wider range of people starting to play not just 40k but miniatures in general Um, I enjoyed your why I like this game videos. Why I like it. That's the, but yes, I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm, yeah, I'll probably do again on another one of them eventually. I mean, soonish. I just don't know exactly when. First time catching you live. You are an inspiration. Thanks for doing what you do. Heading to bed after a 16 hour night. Have a good one. Well, thank you very much, David. I probably, you've already headed to bed at this point because again, I'm as usual, kind of far behind on the stream, but I appreciate that. That's very nice of you to say. Didn't you do kind of review of Space Weirdos and uh, or was that a vid more of I like this game? Yeah, it was I why it was one of my why I like it videos where I talked about Space Weirdos. I also talked about Forbidden Psalm and the affiliated games. I talked about um, the miniatures for Frostgrave and Stargrave. I talked about um, Space Hulk. Yeah, you know, I've got a bunch of different why I like it uh, videos. Um, I use Krylon and Rust-Oleum flats and clear flats on minis all the time. Never use the specific mini brand spray paints too expensive. Yeah. I mean, for me, like I said, the army painter ones, the benefit to that is that they're a color match to the actual like normal paints, not all of them, but like if you've got a normal like bottle of airbrush paint or the, the fanatic, um, so here, this is the starter box. Can I get this to angle? Okay. So you see how. Uh, there's a little dot there, eh, backwards, there and there next to the hexagon. Those dots say in them color primer match. So there is a can of green skin you can buy to spray and then that will match this color specifically if you need to go back and touch things up or blah, 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 or whatever. So that's a benefit if you are into that kind of, you know, if you're into rattle can, that's the one benefit, I think, the big benefit to Army Painter cans is that they are color matched to the paints uh, and also the airbrush paints, I guess, uh, if you want to go down that road too, which is generally what I do. What I really want, and I hope that they make eventually, is I would like to see the rattle can paint colors also available in airbrush spray primer. It, well, you know what I mean, like a bottle that you put in your airbrush and you use it to prime. Um, because right now they have black, gray, and white primer, airbrush primer, and I would like to see them make the colors that they make for the rattle cans also available in airbrush. I think it would just be a, a smart move because having that kind of color matching system just makes a lot of sense. Now there's not really color matching to the speed paints because it's a completely different animal being a transparent paint. You put a speed paint over a different color and now it doesn't match anything because you didn't put it over, you know, it's not opaque, but the opaque colors, they have the, the matching thing. So, but again, also the rattle cans from army painter are cheaper than like, yeah, like the GW rattle cans, what are they, 28 bucks now? Something like that? It's kind of crazy. Um, let's see here. Maybe nerds just love to focus their pointless anger. Well, sure. I mean, have you checked out the Arc World miniatures? I vaguely know about Arc World, but not enough to have checked out the miniatures. My Danish teammates overseas had better English than me. Well, sure, I get that. Wait, Adam from Wisconsin loves cheese? Stop the presses. That's true. I know. Sometimes the upside down clean out trick doesn't clean out the clog in the can. Gotcha. Greetings from Kansas. Uh, we were next to you guys playing tanks at Adepticon. How was the event and what did you learn? 
Um, it was a really good event. So we, Vince and I ran tanks for the apocalypse. I mean, mainly Vince ran it. I just, you know, uh, got all the terrain made and uh, 3D printed and then painted it all. Um, I, but he was running the show much more as far as that during the actual thing. So, um, cause he's kind of the rules guy. So, well, more than kind of, he's the rules guy and I'm the like, you know, marketing and layout and artsy fartsy guy, which is why we work very well together. That all being said, um, it was a lot of fun. It was a great thing. We had 30 people show up. Everybody brought their own tank. It was great. Um, the only thing that I wish we could have done slightly differently is if the tables, so the tables were like a long row of tables, I don't know, 50 feet long in those rooms. So we had three, three foot by three foot boards, but you couldn't get around the board because you were either on one side of that long row of tables or the other side of that long row of tables. So I was kind of wishing that the tables had been separated a bit so people could get the 10 people playing at this table could get around that table and around this table. But so that might be a thing we can tweak in the future or something like that. But other than that, things went really well. Um, it was a lot of fun. So yeah, it was, it was a great time. It, uh, I'm glad that people really enjoyed it and uh, had a good time and enjoyed the game. And um, it's just been like seeing that kind of response has been really cool. So uh, let's see here. When I use spray cans, I clean the nozzle with a bit of thinner on a rag. Oh, interesting. 40K has too much bloat for tournament play. <sighs> yeah, I mean, you're not wrong for sure. Goobertown Hobbies is a great video on it. Yep. Greetings from Iowa. Currently, speaking of cheese, I just picked up some excellent queso dip. Ooh. Um, let's see here. We pay about two bucks per liter in Denmark. So about eight to $10 per gallon. Yep. That's the math we came up with was somewhere around eight or eight or more dollars, roughly. Uh, was Dolly Parton the American music they played to make the company feel comfortable? No, like most of the times we, when we would get into Thomas's car, it would be like black metal or something like that, you know? And, um, but we were coming back from a night of... Like we had been out to, like I said, we'd, we'd, we'd been to the food market. Then we went to walked around, tried to find a bar to hang out at and stuff like that. Thomas was drinking soda the whole time because he was driving. So was, um, Stefan because Stefan was also driving. Um, he was the one with the, the cool Volkswagen, um, electric thing. Um, but the rest of us were drinking pints and whatnot. And so then I don't know, I don't know what it was, but like, you know, because, you know, Thomas and, and, uh, Bo have known each other for so long that, you know, like Bo was like, you know, what I want to listen to. And he's like, what's that? And then they just started messing around with the, you know, Spotify thing or whatever. And then all of a sudden it was Dolly Parton. So yeah, it was not for our benefit. It was definitely, they were enjoying it and having a good time. European countries have better public transit, something about higher population density in countries like the size of our States. Personal vehicles aren't as much of a necessity. Exactly. Like the trains were awesome. Like I really liked being on the trains. I mean, uh, Sunday night, coming from late from Copenhagen, that train was pretty, like the first train we were on was great. It was like, oh, this is nice. There's plenty of space. It's lovely. And then we had to switch trains to a slightly slower train that was just packed. <laughs> so the last like hour and a half maybe of the, the trip, we were standing in a hallway, like kind of almost in between two trains sort of. And we would have to like move out of the way when people want to go by and stuff like that. And because there was no place else to sit, the trains were packed. Evidently that's a thing on Sunday night, which we did not realize. Um, but yeah. In Thailand, there's a 7-Eleven on every street, sometimes even two, and they're all better than the ones here in the States. I mean, some go for, uh, same goes for McDonald's. Interesting. Uh, here in, in, here in California, the low grade is 550. Yeah. The gas, I mean. I would have guessed a day over 42. Well, that's nice of you to say, but no, I'm about a decade older than that. Um, I thought you were like five years older than me. Dang, we probably should have hung out in high school. Oh, there you go. Fellow Gen Xer, check out the music of the Corettes. Hmm, I've not heard of them. Torch, how you doing? Generative AI isn't going away. I think it will become very difficult for them to make money on it. Um, and it also doesn't... It will. I think it will start to work less well. That's the part of the problem. Uh, let's see here. AI is garbage and lazy theft. Yes. Like, again, like I said, there's a difference between AI, generative AI and machine learning. Like machine learning allows me to take a picture on my phone. Um, 
I showed this off on the stream recently. It's just kind of cool. Um, of something like, I don't know, how about, I'm looking for like an object or a person or something like that. Oh, here. So here's a picture of me, you can barely see it, in front of the uh, army painter like sign once we got there on Monday or whatever. And if I press and tap on myself, it separates me out from the background. And I could take this and put it, I could copy, I could paste it, I could move it into like whatever. It'll put a little line around me now, a little glowy line. And I could copy and paste it and put other things. That's using machine learning to figure out what's background and what's not. But it's not using generative AI to figure that kind of stuff out. So, And it's also doing it right there on the phone. Generative AI has to usually go to servers someplace and then use a bunch of electricity. Um, like from what I understand, uh... Microsoft is becoming the biggest user of water in Washington state because of the liquid cooling that needs to happen on all the servers that make the generative AI stuff happen. So yeah, all of these things suck. So, you know, we'll see. But machine learning and things like that, again, those things are great. I like those things. Those are fine. Whoops, everything moved. Um... AI killed deviant art. Oh, I haven't been to deviant art in years and years and years. Wives always love airport gifts. Really shows you thought about them the whole time. I know from experience. Well, sure. Well, we never went to a place that sold candy. So I was the only place to get candy. But it was, it was Danish candy. Like, hey, I brought you back a Snickers from Denmark. It's an American Snickers, I think. I mean, that's not, that's not a good thing. Um... Been watching your channel for about seven years and English is not my first language. So only I've realized that your name is Adam and that Adam and Adam are pronounced the same in the U.S. That's true. That's true. Is there an Uncle Adam video for how to r rescue old paints? I have not tried that. I've not made a video about that. Uh, building Wrath of Kings starters. Remember you mentioning you liked it? Can you tell me what you liked about it? It was the... And this is funny because usually I'm not a fan of the lore of anything. But honestly, I kind of liked the I really enjoyed reading the lore. It was like the lore that was in the original book. It was split up all throughout the book. But it basically made like a short novella. And I really enjoyed that story. I thought it was very cool. That being said, I really liked the models mostly. Well, the, the rule system was good too. That was the, it had a lot going for it. And cool mini or not was dumb to get rid of it. But they are dumb. So there you go. Um, let's see here. I got the 50 point fanatic set, then uh, developed tendonitis in my thumb. Well, that's no fun. Welcome to Wisconsin. Enjoy our beer, brats, and cheese curds. Uh, cheese curds are pretty good. I've had yet to have issues with Easy Off on plastic. Really? Or maybe I'm thinking of brake cleaner. I thought Easy Off, well, Easy Off would maybe make resin a bit spongy. I could see that. Uh, I frequently use oven cleaner to strip plastic, but it only works on some paints, usually acrylic. Uh, great for removing chrome coatings from model car kits, proves. No kidding. Yeah, maybe I'm thinking of brake cleaner that's not you're not supposed to use on plastic. I, I don't remember. Look up Ammo's oil brushers. They don't require you to leach off uh, the linseed oil and are just easier to work with. You can even just gunk them on the model and clean them up. Yeah, I do have some oil brushes, actually. Um, who told me about oil brushers? Oh, Kiko from uh, from the uh, Penny Arcade. Uh, those, yep, there you go. I just noticed that it's, uh, I'm, I've been talking for like eight minutes past what I normally do. I got to get ready for, we're going to lunch over at my in-laws as we usually do. So I've been just yammering on, having a great time. I'm glad to, um, to, you know, to have everybody here and hanging out and it's a lot of fun. So, um, yeah, had a great time in Denmark. Uh, and, uh, I should be back on normal track for things for quite, well, for a while. I will be going to a couple of trade shows in May, but they will be predominantly during the week. So it won't really mess with every other Sunday show, I don't think. But I'll double check on that for sure. So we should be back on regular track now for a while at least. Um, yeah, that's pretty much about it. I want to thank everybody for coming by today. And um, I'm glad to, to, to be back and uh, having conversations with you, obviously, as I kept yammering on over the time limit as I normally do. And um, I don't have any cats waiting at the door, so that's good. Sometimes... 
when they when I close the door so they don't come in here and try to stand directly on the table, then I'll see an orange arm come out from underneath the door or whatever. Or sometimes Rex and his his little paws, little little he's got thumbs. Um, so anyway, yeah, have yourselves a good rest of your weekend or week if it's already started, like over there in the um, you know Australia. And uh, we'll see you again soon. I'll be streaming tomorrow night. Yep, Monday night uh, on Twitch, as I usually do at 7 p.m. Central. So stop by there if you're interested. Give me a follow over on Twitch, and then you'll get a notification when I go live. So that's, well, in theory, you'll get a notification when I go live. So that's pretty much about it. Thanks to everybody for coming by, and um, thanks for watching.